Live from inside a pile of muscular mommy folds, it's the Grandma's Virginity Podcast, Episode 28. On this week's show, comedy writing legends Tom Gamble and Max Pross sit in and share tales from their storied careers. From the beginnings of The Simpsons... Then we yeah, were going to do The Simpsons as a series. You, are you guys in? Yeah. And we were like, eh. If they're funny. <laughs> the Simpsons funny for 30 seconds. I don't know. whole show. <laughs> <laughs> the Marionette set's going to be much better. <laughs> one, of, one of our many great career moves. <laughs> to the inspirations behind classic Seinfeld episodes. And then the real John Voight came on an episode. And like yeah. Bit George or something? Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah but we, we, we were so thrilled to get the real John Voight just so we could finally ask him. I mean, for real. Yeah. Uh, is that your car? Mario stops by. And gives us an update on his latest troubles. And then uh, I get a, if I get a one more one or more coin, uh-huh. it'll turn into a life, and and I cannot use my money. Plus, a brand new Mr. Scoops, your emails, and a whole lot of that more. Dial in to your muscular mommies, because away we go. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Grandma's Virginity Podcast, episode number 28. The newest episode (laughs) of all of the previous ones. I'm your host, Justin Roiland. With me is Ryan Ridley. Hey there, Justin. Jackie Buscarino. (laughs) Oh, hi, Jackie. (laughs) Hi. And today we've got Tom Gamble and Max Prost, comedy legends, on the show. And we're going to interview them a little later. Oh! uh, Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. There we go. Get my sorry, level set. Sorry about our hiatus, guys oh, and girls. I yeah. think we're going to try to be doing, um, at least for the next few episodes, uh, weekly again. Yeah, we've got people booked, so that'll sort of Let's force us. Let's pretend this is like a, a TV sk- thing. Like, who, it'll who, be a, three episodes in a row, then a rerun, then, you know. Yeah, so. Not a rerun, it. just I didn't get an any emails again. from our show producers. Oh, oh, well, we'll make sure to have them loop, loop them in, Dean and Sam. Yeah. Uh, I was just saying to Jackie out there in the uh, in the green room, Justin, uh, your kitchen, that, you know, I try to tr- treat Jackie well. I try to coddle her. I bring her candy bars every yep. week. I, yeah, make her awesome. I, bought her, I bought her some candy bars this week. She's our little diva. You when know? when did make this sure. happen, Every though. show has one. Well, you know, I just figured, I just realized, I'm like, you know, Jackie could just could, could just just turn on us at any second and just leave us high and dry because she's not invested in the show. She just kind of <laughs> fly, fl- flutters in here, sits here for about that? an hour with a good attitude. I think and- she's a little invested. Why are you saying this? It's I just used- the vibe I got. Get. When did I become, get. when did this become divish and like, so no, it's because it you've just, been feeling sorry the, for me. The irony I've is been sad. And no, yes. it is that it's also genuine affection. And the thing that's funny is it's 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 not you being a diva. It's him projecting. I better buy her a candy bar. No, oh, it's also me trying to be a, a good person. You don't I'm not have to like set that as a thing. I'm not. I don't come in here expecting. No, candy, but it's though. me trying to like show my appreciation to you. I'm not going. Oh, what? A, oh, I think Jack. We're about to lose Jackie. I better get her a Heath bar no, this time. Right. I, the score. All right, listen. I mean, Justin knows me well enough. If I decide I don't like someone or don't want to do something, I just wouldn't. Really? Yeah, up. She'd, so she'd be do, done. You do like doing this. It'd be done. Yeah, I'd be done. Yeah, of so, course. So really quick, I just want to say a couple uh, things. We we need to request a favor from our listening audience. Please, please go onto our iTunes page and rate us. Give us a ratings on iTunes. We stopped asking a bunch of episodes ago because we happened? just don't really care. Well, we realized we found out that, you know, it can help the show. So just go on and rate. I, get, I don't know. Supposedly, I'm starting to... To, to see things where other podcasts are going, please rant us in the show because it helps in our rankings. And well, iTunes. we don't like, fucking know what mysterious yeah, way force, they rank yeah, their yeah, shit. Yeah. But, but so maybe if you rate us more, it'll give knows? us a higher ranking. Just, just it couldn't well, hurt. Do we Put have a like low that. ranking? No, 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 no. Well, yes. yeah, yeah, we're off. We do. We're off the, the of the top two hundred. We used to be. We used to be in the good old days last year, Jackie, flying high in the top twenty or so. No, but well, now, what are we now? now? Oh, psh, you'll be lucky. A thousand? Even. Yeah, but, you probably. Know, it is true though because we were getting a fuck ton of ratings around that time so so we, we sort of tapered off around 200 and uh, we, we need we need more i mean not to sound i mean you know i whatever other podcast casts ask every week we're asking this one episode just give us a fucking rating dude <laughs> yeah. just go on to go on to itunes and give it good bad or indifferent it doesn't matter just give us a rating rate us on yeah. there where you can say you know two stars it's okay there's one episode i like <laughs> just rate it yeah just i've been listening it. to all 28 yeah. i don't know <laughs> what i'm expecting yeah <laughs> It's oh. the it's all look we 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 work really hard to put it together so all you have to do is just log into iTunes and we don't and charge and click a button yet no we're not gonna oh, charge oh never I wouldn't work on it if you had to pay for it even if all the profits went to you no I wouldn't and I wouldn't <laughs> even keep if them. the profits went them, to wounded vets I was gonna yeah I was gonna say I'd give them to what disabled, about the people in uh, Japan mm-hmm. what about oh. the people in Japan 
Um, okay, so the other thing I want to say is the Nintendo 3DS con- c- c- contest. Hopefully it's still um, going to be produced if it's... I mean, no, 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 it's, it's happening. Listen, uh, don't even say that. It's not even funny. The <laughs> Nintendo 3DS contest is as strong as ever. Yeah. We've got really good entries. Uh, we're, 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 getting, we're getting more all the time. Is the, there a deadline? Yeah, yeah. The deadline March is March 25th. 25th. Yeah. Have your entry in really quickly. The contest is you find th- uh, three minutes, any, anything less than three minutes, uh, audio from your favorite episode or moment of the show, and you create some visual component. First prize gets their choice of either uh, the Nintendo 3DS, brand new in the box, uh, a framed, signed, uh, original art asset from the first episode of Mr. Sprinkles, if that floats your boat, or a date with Jackie. Didn't if, float VH1s. If she, if, no. if oh, the yeah, date no, with I Jackie. Was reading that. It makes me sound so mean that now, you know if I approve of the person. Yeah, but if the like, guy's like, hey, Jackie. Well, I'm obviously, yeah. yeah, if it's a criminal or, 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 or you know, or some lunatic. So that's my point. That's I'm true. trying to bake that in. That's so true. the third prize being your own transportation, your own accommodations, and you get a date with Jackie as long as she approves. But really, there's going to be an alternate, which is going to yeah. be a second framed original art asset from a later episode of a Mr. Photocopy. Sprinkles. photocopy. No, no, no. <laughs> an original art signed art asset. So uh-huh. th- how, about, so how fucking... about a signed Four Loco can uh, uh, from Justin? Okay. Me and Jackie. <laughs> since the show is powered yeah. by Four Loco. Yeah, uh, uh, I might do that. Um, maybe I'll include that mm-hmm. along with- I mean, with... you drink one every episode. Yeah, why don't I just include maybe? one of those for every winner? Yeah. That, that's <laughs> immediately included into- mm-hmm. Every winner, but uh, how many uh, things have been submitted so far? I don't know. I don't want to take too much time on it. I just uh, wanted to bring you know, it up uh, enough, enough to enough to, to to give. Don't no. I'm not going to play this game, Jackie. Enough, Jackie. There's enough. been a lot. There's been a she's lot. Pant up. She's trying to give me hand signals. Jackie, there's the been a whole ton. Uh, hundreds. Yeah, like hundreds, hundreds of yeah, thousands, yeah, yeah. thousands, thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. millions. Wow. More more submissions than there are uh, current death toll in Japan. We actually just got one from Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah, who wow. is dead now? <laughs> oh, yeah, he sent it right God, before the earthquake. Guys. Um, it was the last thing he did was yeah. hit the send button and then <laughs> earthquake. Just not even. It's too soon. God forbid. Yeah. Well, this no. Will well, the next on Friday, one's coming so. here. The next one's gonna hit oh, L.A. and I'll, ta- I'll be the first one to die. So don't worry about it. Justice will be served. Uh, I, don't um, mean, I don't even want to think about it. Let's focus. Yeah, well, on, let's uh, put our head in the sand. Libya. Just like the dollar mm-hmm. isn't failing. Oh, and the cost of gas now. Yeah. Thank you. We're all fucked. Let's put our heads in the sand and pretend I like it doesn't happen. I didn't even know happening. that we got because that's what happened. That's what happened in World War Two. Uh-huh. Uh. It's not me. What? Uh, everything's okay. And yeah, then all of a sudden, Hitler guys, come on. I mean, he's yeah, he's, he's peace in our time. Yeah, he's sort yeah. of coming through and like yeah. taking Jews he away. He agreed. But... He agreed not to invade Czechoslovakia. He's not yeah, going to exactly. bother us in England. Put your head in the sand. Yeah. If Wake learned, up, America. You learned anything from that last episode? Yeah. <laughs> You it's learn. that you, my you, grandfather. <laughs> Did you know that his, his, uh, his yeah. mistress, uh, who you know, in the final, the last, the day he they committed suicide, they got married or whatever. But Eva his Braun? yeah, mm-hmm. she um totally was pretty much cheating on him. No, sheltered oh. the, uh, from the war. She had no idea what was going on. Are you really. fucking Rommel? And uh, <laughs> she, the only time she got involved, and was like, you can't let this happen, is when Hitler wanted to put a ban on cosmetics. Are you That's serious? when she put her fist down. Wait, and wait, was wait, like, wait, wait. absolutely not. Wait, 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 wait. What, what was first of all? Why did Hitler want to ban cosmetics? Because we were doing it here in the states. We because were we were cos- rationing oh, for, everything, oh. and he was like, "Well, if America's gonna, America's going to do it, we're, we need to ration too." Not like you know, why already they- <laughs> Europe was rationing. And, I love how he's like, it's, he's rationing but, for something he caused. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, when she got wind of that, idiot. she was like, "I will not." Uh-huh. And so uh, he just had them stop producing cosmetics. Mm. He did not put a yeah. ban on them. Well, so she just had like a st- like a like a big uh, good for him. stockpile of cosmetics. Oh yeah, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. Was she attractive? Not really. She was in really good shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's not muscular. She's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> really muscular. Her face was isn't pretty, gay? but she was really stylish <laughs> and she's always the manliest had good woman hair. you've ever seen. Does it? Here, here are the three things that every like legendary figure is rumored to be gay, gay, Jewish. She's a vegetarian or anti-Semitic. He's a vegetarian. Hey, was Hitler Jewish? No, that's no, a but rumor. that's a rumor. Like no, everybody was not. like, he was. Hey. I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but everybody. Well, Disney was supposedly gay or anti-Semitic. It's either you're. Ga- oh, everybody's rumored to be gay. Well, I'm just going to get it out there now. 
You're I'm gay, gay anti-Semitic, and, <laughs> and Jewish. Jewish. All three. <laughs> I'm, a du- I'm a triple threat. And a homophobe. Yeah, I, 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 yeah exactly. Uh-huh. Um, all right, so here we are. Uh, Settled in. The business is at the hand is taken yeah, care of. Yeah, all that bullshit I'm very is excited. Done. We already interviewed. We're, we're, we've got an interview coming up in a second. We already recorded it, but it's oh. with Tom Gamble and Max Prost. Now, listen, I want to contextualize this for you kids out there. This is a big deal, kids. Yes. Listen up. If you are a fan of comedy of the last 30 comedy jokes. years- Comedy jokes and humor. Uh, and and Tom chuckles. Gamble and Max Pross have written on every iconic comedy show of the last thirty well, years. Saturday not Night every, Live, like, whatever, but the lot. big ones, the, the Mount Rushmore comedy shows. The ones that shows. matter. Yeah, Saturday Night Live, David Letterman, um, The Simpsons, and Seinfeld. They've written on all Wonder the years. Shows. Not even oh, to mention 20, Wonder yeah. Years, It's Gary Shandling Show, and Futurama, and the all critic. the other stuff in between. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to interview them. We talked to them for about an hour or so. And I think that if you are a fan of comedy and behind the scenes comedy writing and comedy television shows, well, and cunty little <laughs> impressions and voices, <laughs> then you'll love it. Oh, you talking uh, about their impressions? About, no, I'm talking about you. Oh. What the voice you're doing right now? Oh, okay. Then Not you them. will love this interview, and from what I understand, it's their first podcast appearance, and also they haven't done a lot of interviews in any. And, and you'll hear they it. It's were coming delightful. up. And Jackie, now, I love well, them. Now, what, what about right now? Oh, what about the entertainment value of right now? Yeah, the oh. moment is there's only now, Ryan. Remember? <laughs> well, like, I'm just trying to trying to contextualize everything. Remember that's what Eckhart like Tolle told us? American Idol uh, uh, song. What's what did that? you just say? What did you just say? The moment, the moment, the moment is right now. Isn't that the song they sing at the end when no, they play for American Idol? No, it's the only moment. There was only. Oh, now. there he is. I haven't listened to that at all. FYI, Jackie uh, Eckhart Tolle is here. I'm one of your new no, favorite characters. Oh God. He, you should ask him some questions Come because on. I think you're. You need to focus on the power Aren't of the now. Are you gay? Are you anti-Semitic? Are, Are you, you Jewish? <laughs> I am right now, but I won't be in the moment, but that doesn't matter. Oh, my God. Are you as charmed by me as you are by Mario, Jackie? <laughs> oh, no. Um, Eckhart. Yes? Can you help me? I'm having trouble sl- not not living in the power of the now. What What's should I do? What's your problem, Justin? I don't know. I just... Get caught up in You're all mad. these You're stresses. You're thinking about your iPod 2 coming in? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. focused on I, I, I ordered an iPod 2, and it's going to take three weeks to get here. Hey, will that Nintendo game be unpopular by the time we give it away as a prize? No, it, like, it, it releases on the 27th. Our oh, contest ends okay. on the 25th. There's gotcha. no such thing as the we will, 27th. We will be able to – I'll be able to mail it to the winner the day it comes out. Gotcha. Okay. So, no. And by the way, my, my prediction is that you won't be able to find these things – all, for a year, I I'm working on my entry. Oh, Eckhart, what 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 is it? What's oh, it going to be? It's an animated piece. You I know did... that's interesting, Eckhart. Once you make that, uh huh. Do, do you ever think about it again, or do you just focus no. on no? Uh uh-uh. uh I'm going to enter a contest for the Nerdist next. Oh, re- what's there? What are they doing? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> something. I got to write an essay about uh, Doctor Who or something. I don't know. Oh. Some, well, some that's bullshit. good. Well, you're busy. Yeah. I, I, I thought I, I didn't realize that. But you, I took. The, I didn't realize that you wasted your precious time with these sorts of things. I, you seem so much more above that. <laughs> I think that you. You who do you who do you think I am, Justin? I'm a fan of the comedy podcast. I don't know. You you just seem. What more, do you think? I'm I'm just meditating 24 hours a day. Seem, you seem so much more no. locked down and no. sort of ab- above all that stuff. I'm very creative. Huh. All right. Well, uh, so anyway, I took some of your funny audio <laughs> and I made some drawings to it. I really want to win the date with Jackie. Oh. oh. Well, you're rich, so. Oh, is that so, Jackie? What are your what's going on with you? That's what I want to know. I haven't talked to you in a while. I haven't talked to you in. Yeah, like, it's been a few weeks. So I want to know what's the latest with Jackie. What's, what's going, going on? on in Jackie's world? Um, I'm working. Uh huh. Like a dog. Yeah. Is that, are you still working for that rich guy who makes you act like a dog? What? Yeah, you remember <laughs> you told us you, 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 <laughs> you, 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 you fuck him sometimes in S&M costumes? What is this? Oh, wait, no, that's the that sh- movie, The Secretary, isn't it? <laughs> no, I'm refer- Oh, I'm supposed to see that <laughs> oh, movie. You're, yeah. refer- you're referring the to Shining, a different movie. The Shining, The Shining, oh, okay, where she dressed up in a dog costume. Okay, okay. Anyway, oh, that's okay. scary. Yeah, so what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to think of something exciting to share. I'm starting to get finger or f- finger. I'm starting to get fingered. I'm starting to get feeling back in my finger that was broken. Oh. That's exciting. That's how did you break it again? I was carrying a boulder. Look at Justin like a roadie. Well, just no, I just want to make sure that ju- Jackie's mic. The, I want to make sure that she's she's on mic. I Go smashed ahead. it. Remember, I smashed my finger with a boulder. Uh huh. So I'm getting feeling back. Mm-hmm. Um. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why? Are you getting any feeling wait, wait, back wait, wait, in your wait. heart? 
Hold no. on. Before we get to the heart question, what 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 the fuck were you doing that you were going to smash your finger with a boulder? What were you up That's to? That's an old story. Is it? Okay, never mind. Tune into another episode and <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, so so yeah, uh, uh, you getting any feeling back in your heart? <clears throat> no. Oh, still numb? Yes. Are you sad? Are you dating yes. again? Are you interested in no. new boys? No. Come oh. on. No, you can't. You can't. Okay, well, did you any crazy antics that you've been up to lately? Any wild stories? What do you even do with your weekends? <clears throat> um, oh, I saw Rango. Ooh. It oh, was really? so good. Oh, God. I wish I had a quarter for every time I heard that. I'd be <laughs> fucking... It is. It was... You especially would appreciate it. I don't understand how they got away with the things that they did for it being a children's movie. Uh-huh. Um, there's there's kids cigar smoking. playing with guns. <laughs> there's a kid... Uh, well, they're all desert creatures, but uh-huh. they grab Rang- the, the one little... I don't know what he was. A mole, a little boy. Rango's grabs Rango's cock is out the whole time. <laughs> grabs Rango's gun and like puts it in his face and puts it in his mouth. Uh-huh. And then, like, puts it up his ass and, and like, fucks it. And no, and, like, but, there's bare breasted Barbie. Yeah. Like, and there's yeah. cursing, and it's. What is that going to do to the kids? It's what, so good. Look, look, look Fear and loathing reference. Kids are watching porn on their parents' <laughs> computers. <laughs> yeah. Rango is the least of everyone's worries. I mean, look at the old Looney Tunes cartoons. You know, like, there was anti yeah. Semitism, there was drinking, smoking, there was. Coming, death shitting, yeah. fucking. <laughs> no, but at the theater, when the gun part there, happened, you could hear the parents. felching short. <laughs> the parents were horrified by it because uh, oh. I saw it out in oh, Santa really? Clarita. You know so. what you should have done? You should have said, "I'll give you something to be fucking horrified by." And showed him your you breasts know? and done something horrible. Oh. I don't know what. <laughs> I mean, geez, go, go go. Why don't you go uh, fucking do some research about the current economic state yeah. of this country yeah. Yeah. and then fucking be worried. <laughs> <laughs> don't be worried about fucking Rango, you asshole. Yeah, but, yeah, why don't we do that, Justin? A cartoon about the collapse of the, 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 the Federal the, Reserve. The, the, no, the collapse of, of the of the of the, the currency of of, yeah. of America. Yeah, we'll do that. That'll Every be fucking goddamn amazing. day, I've got to hear Justin or no, no, it's not true. Emails. It's not true. I, I'm I'm half kidding. By and the way, I found everybody. a book in Justin's uh, bedroom that was like written by a, a religious. Hold on, nut can I be clear? 2008, the year of God's no, no. final judgment. No, no, no. God's like, witness. God's. Can I just say something really quick? The guy's a lunatic. I was on. A, I somehow stumbled upon his website. Whether you bought was... all of his books, didn't you? No, no. no. This guy. Was 2007, a... God's me. final witness. Hold 2006, on. God's final. I swear, <laughs> this is the year. No, so he was giving the books away for free, and I bought the book. Or, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't buy it. He was giving them away for free, and yeah. I, I said, I'll take one because you're crazy. And then I got it, and I went sort of went through it and, like, highlighted shit. Yeah, there's the, the notes. Craziness. Justin's got notes, like, literally just, like, Justin's commentary, like, like underlined, and then, he, like, oh, yeah, right. He says Bullshit. in the book, he says then, in the book that, he, that God withheld uh, the Earth's ability to communicate with one singular language until just recently. Which is not Come true. On. Been Why isn't he a guest on the show? <laughs> yeah, I know so we should get book. him on. Well, we, once I figure out the Skype situation, I don't want him actually <laughs> to know where I live or be in. Here but with but us. what's great is Justin's got like these notes in it, like circled, like literally, like oh fuck you, like and and God's judgment, the seventh seal will open uh, with the coming war in the Middle East, and he's, oh bullshit, and then every now and then be circled like. Hmm, interesting. Actually, you're literally <laughs> just like, you know what, actually, this seems Wait pretty reasonable. Yeah. Hey, if you're only right 1% of the time. <laughs> ah. This guy, this guy. Well, or, or you can say a clock is always right twice. Yeah, okay? exactly. You know? I mean, so either yeah, way you look exactly. at it. You know? I mean, the guy's onto something in yeah. a, a couple of parts, you know? Uh, somebody else predicts that the end of the world is another crazy Christian preacher. is May 21st, 2011 this year. Uh-oh. Wait, May 21st? 2011. Wait, why? What's the significance of that? Uh, I don't know. That's his, day his that, calculations. It's very scientific. That's the study. day that is he did he did the scientific study yeah. and figured out that's the day that his his savings runs out, <laughs> and he's he's unemployed and he's like fuck. That's the last. That's the I run out of money. It, the, the world has to end. What that is day. he hoping that like the yeah, IRS like, is going to read this? And go, no, no, no. Oh, he's, he's hoping he's hoping that you know he won't have to fucking deal with you know being homeless uh-huh. or whatever his problem's going to be. Maybe his wife gave him an ultimatum and said, if you don't clean up your act by May 21st, 2011, <laughs> I'm leaving you. And he's like, oh, boy, how am I going to get out of this I one? know. The end of the world will come. <laughs> and then I won't have to deal with it. Everyone yeah. will die together. Uh, uh, Justin was saying to me today, he goes, you know, I knew this was coming. I could just sense it coming. He's like, we we're talking about the Japanese earthquake. And he says, you know, it sure does seem like there's a lot more of these happening lately. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean, Justin? He's like, I'm just saying. I'm like, well, what does that mean? What are you trying Every to year, say? There's a yeah. huge tragedy like, now. And I'm like, well, well what are you Mark referencing? Your calendars. What Once are you referencing? Year. 
Meanwhile, there's huge tragedies. Look, go back hundreds every, of years, thousands yeah, yeah, of years. Every year, there's something. They just didn't have people, the internet. People have short memories. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. It seems like there's been a lot every year for hundreds of years. Really, with these of the kind world. of death tolls every year? And, oh, you know. Yes, well, there's been even worse yeah. back in the day because they didn't have like the infrastructure. Oh, really? Were you there, Ryan? <laughs> Were you there? See, his argument is flawed because he says they weren't even recording earthquakes yeah, no, it's back like, then. It's a, but it's like, ju- well, then how do you know that they were having them? Yeah. What the oh, fuck are you talking about? There was like these about? horrible earthquakes in like, you know, the middle of nowhere. People's in sticks and caves. And, uh, 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 okay, everybody all right? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Oh, my God. Nobody died. Don't record this, though. Don't record this. We don't want anyone to know how safe these earthquakes were back in the year 500. Yeah, your, your, your argument's flawed because it's like, you know, you, you, we're arguing about whether a tree falls in the woods where no one was around to ever hear or know or see about it. Wait, are you denying? You know what I'm saying, what are you fool? To, so I said that, 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 that in the, la- the last hundred years, Yo, the, dog, the you're worst earthquakes shit, in dog. recorded history of the last hundred years. Yo, you're full like, of shit, dog. Most of them were in the 50s and 60s. So Justin's like, doesn't it seem like there's been a lot of these lately? I'm like, Jackie, what do you think? Uh, no, I, natural I, do, disasters I, I agree on, with on Ryan. The rise. No, uh, natural disasters happen every year. Yeah. There's something horrible and that happens. And it's only nuts who are looking for some narrative. Yeah. Natural disasters right. on the rise <laughs> tonight at 9. Natural disasters on the rise. Tune in. <laughs> Tune in to find out. Uh, uh, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then, you know, Justin said, he goes, he, this is what he said. And he then goes, the tr- guy turns goes, off the, goes, all right, and cut. Listen. And he says, ratings are on the rise. <laughs> 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 and they toast their champagne glasses. You know what Justin said when I asked him about, like, well, what are you talking about? Because, uh, you know, the pH balance is affecting. <laughs> He's trying to say something about No, no, how- I said, I said the, the earth. No, no, or I said like, the no. Metaphorically, the Earth's metaphorical oh, pH yeah, yeah. balance is being uh, disrupted by, by the, the virus population. of humans. Yeah, by the virus of mankind. Basically, we're spreading yeah. and diseasing yeah. a living organism, aka the planet Earth, <laughs> and we're fucking violating it and raping it and shitting on it and pissing on it. We're a fucking virus. And, this, and the, these That's earthquakes, not crazy. These look, earthquakes look, and tsunamis are basically like the the Earth's like no, the, symptoms, do, like the cold shivers and their yeah. The world the world is like trying to shake the fleas off of itself. That's How does the, the, so the world is a conscious entity. No, the world, yes. It's, the world is like an ant. It's not <laughs> the intelligent. The world is a vampire. Yeah, there you go. So so where did you read this Fakakta theory? Ah, uh, you know, I wrote it myself. I, I know it because it's funny. I'm working on my own thesis. In that book that I found, I literally opened up the chapter and I was like, oh, this is... This is where he got the whole thing about how, remember in like our second or third episode, he's like, the Nintendo 3DS and all this other stuff, it's a sign of the apocalypse. He's very serious. Wait, like, wait, wait. I, didn't, I didn't And get I literally that. read in this book, oh, this is where Justin yeah, got Yeah, it's like, ah, the Nintendo 3DS. Yeah. Is, no, so I, I, what are you talking I, I about? I can't wait to the open up the next book. The three-year-old book. Yeah, the three-year-old book. Okay. I can't wait to open wait, up the next book. what did I get from like, that? Is the Earth Alive? <laughs> <laughs> By J. Michael Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> I find out it's some nut Pu- Montana. Published, uh, self-published uh, <laughs> study. <laughs> I believe <laughs> chapter one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I-, I can't help but feel like the Earth is alive to some extent, in that it's the only planet that we know of that actually has fucking all the shit going on. Is you know the, what I mean? Is in the moon is do you, are you the moon is dead as fuck. <laughs> the moon is, the moon is like a fucking skin flake. No, the moon is that like the a, fucking ticks eat in your bed or no, the bed bugs. I'm or imagining the fuck in your, it's like the, like the Earth is the like <gasps> and then the moon's got like a stethoscope and it's like oh Earth. Oh, you, you're it's getting all sick. these people on me, Moon Doctor Moon. I'm oh, so man. sick. I don't know. I'm just I'm just uh, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what's going on, just, just like stop everybody figuring else. It out. It's, the universe is chaos. There's no meaning to it. We're just here randomly. And oh, I'll just know. go buy another Nerf ball shooter <laughs> and fucking play around then. Just fill up another blank. Every time you see a, a blank wall space in your house, Justin, just fill just it with toys. Put a new action figure, a new, a new. That'll make something me feel... you, you tear out of a magazine because it's an Indian guy with cross eyes. All right, you're right. <laughs> You know, just whatever weird shit you need to heal yourself, just externalize huh, it. Jeez, I don't need therapy. I just can. <laughs> I'll just do that. I think I, what he's saying is right. Ryan's right. Um, Thank you, Eckhart. Hey, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if we should talk about this. Maybe just briefly. But have you guys been watching American Idol? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it's horrible. That's all I really want to say about it. Uh-huh. Is that it's horrible. Um, huh? It's horrible. Tell me more. Well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Those new judges, mm-mm. 
Not cutting it. Who are the new judges? Uh, uh, Ju- uh, uh, the fucking Julia Child. No, no, the the diva, the Puerto Rican diva, um, Rosie Perez. No, the Jennifer the, Lopez. Yes. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. Oh. And she um, must have nothing better to do. Her on. single is not doing well. Dream, you know, uh, love in an elevator. Steve Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, Stephen yeah, Tyler. Wait, wait, wait. So okay, go on. Sorry. So those two are the new ones, and it was all good up until the live show started, and then I realized they're not going to say a bad thing about anybody. Ever. Well, is Simon still on? No. Oh, then there's no show. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Thank oh. you. Because here's the thing. All I want to see when I watch that show is I want to h- see someone sing, and then I want to see them stop, and then I want the judges to go, Ooh. ugh, that w- you might as well fucking go home right now, because that was fucking horrible. So no one Fuck says you. that. Fuck you. Dream is over. Your dream is over. You fucking suck, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my fucking sight. I want to throw right. up. Who's the third person? You said J-Lo? R- R- and of course, oh, Randy. But and Paula's Rand- not on. No. no. Randy's yeah. the only one, though, that is saying anything negative, but it's not even bad. It's just like, yo, dog, that just was all right. <laughs> that just was all right for me. Um, you it's know. It's probably going to get canceled soon. I No, that's the thing. It, the ratings are fucking out of control. It's f- I don't even understand. with Simon, Simon is him. He's the and can show. I also say, yeah. as someone who never watches American Idol, like I started early this season and I watched from all the auditions and like the, the lunatics and fucking ne'er do wells that come in. Why are you watching it? Because that shit's amazing. And watching these fucking poor yeah. megalomaniacs come in thinking they're good and they're like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and then they're like, ah, yikes, get the fuck out of here, kooky, kooky fucking mm-hmm. biscuits. And the guy's like, ah, wah, but on the other side of their mouth, they're like, but thank you for being so fucking. Yeah, crazy. thank you, exactly. So, it's but then, good and, TV. and then. And, and then you follow these people that get picked, and then, and then it's like, okay, you get to Hollywood, and it's like, now, you motherfucker, desperate fucking singers, you have to work as groups, and they're fighting, and it's the drama, and they get up, and they fucking suck, and they're crying, and it's so dramatic. What if what if there was, what if American Idol, like, does evolve, and after the economic collapse, it's still on the air, and it's like, you're still having to, like, sing, but also, like, fight for your life. Oh, and that'd be amazing. Just, and then also, then, uh, major, m- just in-your-face product placement. Because you're saying you want, you want, like, why can't there be more, like, why can't we pit them against each other? Why can't there be more drama? It's like, what if, like, they had to fight for their lives? Yeah. Like, what if Fantasia and Clay Aiken were, the like, Coca-Cola in a jungle? Coca-Cola, Battle <laughs> of the Night. <Nights. laughs> like, it's mixed with Survivor. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like Battle Royale. No, it's Battle Royale. Like, okay, yeah, let me yeah, call yeah. my like agent. All the 24 contestants, like, are, are put in this, like, this jungle. Let's and set then up if a they meeting. survive through the day, then they sing at night. And <laughs> okay, and then the singer who sings the worst has to go out first. Next up next is uh, is uh, is Amethyst. Uh, this afternoon, <laughs> she she murdered um, seventeen Joey Spice with her bare hands by bashing his head against the rock. And right and now, now she'll she's be singing Elton John's Rocket Man. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I'd watch that show. Yeah, that'd be. I'd, I'd watch it. I'm just saying, if you want more. And the- the, uh, the 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 stress of uh, recently killing a man is definitely on her mind. Here we go, Rocket Man! Oh my God! I felt the life go out of his body. I saw his eyes turn dead. She bangs. She bangs. <laughs> Okay, so here's a brand new segment idea I just uh, thought of today. Ooh. Yeah. And it's a Jackie-centric no! segment. No! Oh, what is it? This segment is called... It better be good. <laughs> Hold on, let me look at the name I wrote down. Oh, God. This segment is called On the Brighter Side with Jackie Buscarino. Oh, no. Jackie, oh, this segment has rules. Okay, okay you understand let's hear me? It. Okay, I like games. Okay, and I, yeah. You must only talk about something positive from your life, and you can't say it ironically, and you can't say it sarcastically. Ooh, that's gonna be hard. That's why it's a game. All right, how, I, I I see this segment uh, lasting once and very short. Okay, mm. well let's try it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm ready. You're so negative all the time, Jackie. You say mm-hmm. you have such a bad, dark, uh, ill-fated okay. life. Mm-hmm. The rule is you gotta say something genuinely positive. Okay, tear up. Ask about her a question. What? About anything. Okay, I've got it. Okay, so oh. now that we've got the rules, let uh-huh. me start. Okay. What's the worst thing going on in your life right now? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, but I See? have to answer it. Through a right? hardball to her. <laughs> I gave her a hardball. But I can't answer it honestly? 
No, you, you have gotta, to say. You, gotta, you just it's said all about attitude. You but gotta, you just said I have to respond to something that's bright, the bright side of the worst. You have to be positive. So the bright, bright side of the worst thing in no, my life. No, you just this gotta say stupid. something. Yeah. Well, Justin's trying to. Uh, of okay, course, go. Ambush whatever. Did you come up with questions? Hey, listen. I'm just trying to help. So, Jackie, tell us about your outlook for the future. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah, let's hear it. On the bright side, them's the rules. Go ahead, Jackie. I will. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not be diagnosed with cancer. Oh, well that's not so bad. Huh. So right. I better knock on wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well she's You know what that is pretty good. Yeah, that is good. Hey. Yeah, all right. That means you'll probably live a long life. All right. Well, well, at least she won't die of cancer. I mean, yeah. she, she could get hit by a bus. So, so, or even yeah. die of something worse than so cancer. So what else, though? What's the second? What about your, your, your future for love? Yeah. And a relationship? Yeah. I will think that uh, um, animals will love me if I get an animal or a dog or something. I'm talking about mm. human love. Human love. Wait, man. hold on. Let's talk about this. Okay. Let's think about it. Hmm. Hmm. That's not ne- particular. That's not negative per- it, by itself. She's evading But it's the... certainly insinuating a negative. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're breaking the rules. Breaking the rules. Ah! Okay. okay. You know okay, what okay. you're doing. Yeah. I, um, my, for, okay, wait. Say it again. My future. Your future outlook about love and romance. And obviously romance oh, cannot be with an animal. Shit. Unless it's a really intelligent, sort of anthropomorphized, <laughs> yeah. like magical animal, like planet. Howard the Duck. Yeah. I hope that maybe. Stop saying maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, through spells and witchcraft, I'll be able to resurrect <laughs> uh, the spirit of. Uh, of um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, when did this turn science fiction? Okay, let's, let's revise, let's revise okay. this. This isn't, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> you cannot invoke a sorcery, um, science, <laughs> science <laughs> fiction, so uh, time travel, yeah. um, genie it's wishes. Funny. Like I, I believe in love and romance uh, in in a level that it just do- it doesn't exist. That's why I'm like it would if it if my spells and wit, you know. Sorry for you, but uh, it's like, okay, okay, um, so what do I feel like? Uh, so just the, say something positive the proper, about your... The proper answer would be like, I'm going to find Mr. Right, and I feel it. Well, the proper answer could be, yeah, exactly. But oh, well, you have to mean on. it, though. That's the yeah, part. Yeah, see, That's I, I don't, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of something positive. I know something. Oh, here it is. I'll realize I, I don't have, need... I have maybe five good years left in me with my looks. That's an inherent. Okay, no, no, no. Can you rephrase it more positively? I ha- I have five years left of good looks. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. All right. It okay. is a liberal estimate, but. <laughs> all right. Uh, good work. No, I like that. Okay, I like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. That's pretty good. Good work. Okay, well. Uh... Has the segment been everything you've dreamed of and more? <laughs> Yeah. Has it been everything you've dreamed of? Tune in before? next yeah. week. So does that help, like, like, saying that? Like, hey, I've got five years, half a decade left of good looks. We're going to do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do with these next five years of hot Jackie action? Um, I'm going to go on a lot of dates with my dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to go to Disneyland. Yeah. So you've got five more years of good looks, looks for your dad. Yes. We f- yeah, yeah, yeah. So your dad Ooh. can be attracted to you for five years. Are you going to uh, eat your dad's butthole out? <laughs> Ew, God, gross. Maybe that's pretty positive. Ew, that's, a posi- that's putting a positive spin stop on it. life. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going to eat my dad's butthole out. I hope he shaves it. All right. So, okay. Okay. Jackie, next. Five more years positive of news. good looks. Yeah. Good yeah. luck for works. daddy. Five more years of... Well, Jackie, I hope that you reel in a nice soul rich man. Uh, lots of muscles in those next five years. I don't know. All right. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's oh, negative. is that still the game? Yeah. Oh, okay. How about this? Thank you. You're welcome. All okay. right, done. Um, okay. So. So. Well, Justin, did you give Jackie her candy bar? I already ate both of them. Oh, gross. Yeah. I was starving. Don't you I know haven't how eaten to, all day. Don't you, know, don't you want to wait? Kind of space them out? No. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to eat them right okay. away. So, okay. Justin. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're 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 uh, so we're sitting here with uh, with two legendary comedy writers uh, and friends of mine, uh, Tom Gamble and Max Pross. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> hit that applause Hold button. Hold on, give me a second. See, Max, you asked why we have headphones. Hold <laughs> on, here it comes. you wouldn't be able to hear this. Here it is, perfectly timed sound effect. There, it yeah, is. <laughs> here we go. All right. All right. So, so uh, yeah, we we're, we're really glad that you guys could be on the show. We have a ton of uh, questions to ask you, and Ryan is going to lead it. What? Aren't you, Ryan? <laughs> Why don't we dive right into the first stuff? Yeah, I want this oh, is the first podcast we've ever done, right? We've never been on. A... Yeah, no. So this, so we talk, and then you animate this into some kind of feature <laughs> film. <and we're>... Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's Jackie good. does all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be CGI. Yeah. What's um, the budget on those, Jackie? Um. Oh, pretty high, high caliber of project here. Right. I'm thinking half a million an episode. Okay. All right, very okay. good. Yeah, sounds so, good. So, so well, I, I, what, one of the first things that we wanted to ask was uh, about your early experience on Letterman. We're just going to go well, chronologically. Well, why don't we just right? give an overview? Because okay, an overview. Yeah. So the Ryan's audience knows. Good at that. So yeah. the audience knows knows exactly what they're in store for. Go for Stop it. Stop me if I'm wrong. Any of this? Did, right. did you guys so, start on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, we did. We, we did. Uh, as apprentice writers, yeah, we, we were in college, and then Jim Downey, who's still at the show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, said, um, "Hey, because Max was going to go to medical school, right?" And, still might. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I had a job writing. Uh, going, to, I was going to go to Kansas City and write Hallmark cards. What? And, yeah, and then um, <laughs> and then Jim Downey called us and said, "Hey, you know, uh, there's some openings for writers. Um, why don't you guys make a submission together, basically become a team, and we can hire both of you for the price of one person." And so we were there oh. the, the fifth season as apprentice writers. We actually owe our careers to Belushi and Aykroyd <laughs> leaving the show to go make the Blues Brothers movie. Cause Why? Because they, they functioned as writers on that show. So when they left, they, they, they lost a, a big writing thing. So, uh, you know, in addition to hiring Harry Shearer to replace him as an actor, uh, we found out they just needed a lot more writers so they could get us, believe me, a lot wow. cheaper than they were paying those guys. And we oh, hired uh, wow. Sarah Paley and uh, Peter Aykroyd. Peter Dan Aykroyd, Aykroyd Dan's yeah. little brother. This was, was a was long right. time ago. This, this is, this is yeah. like 30 years ago. I mean, well, we're, we're here to function as old-timey comedy <laughs> historians. <laughs> yeah. well, but well, these are the stories you want. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. also, I mean, let's give a brief overview. We'll go back to each one. But then then you were on Late Note, David Letterman, writing in that. If you want the overview, do you want to know, like, why we're here to begin with? Like, how do we know Justin and what, what uh, we're doing? No. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that okay, chronology. Yeah. Okay. An of do you even want to mention that you work with but, Justin? I mean, it's no, a so black just, mark. So it's just like two weird old writers <laughs> happen to be in the neighborhood. But, yeah, yeah. Hey, look who's walking by. <laughs> you know, it's funny that we're both over 50, but our credits, uh, they're like uh, Letterman and um, – uh, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, Live and The Simpsons, so we could be in our twenties. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes people go like, "Hey, there's he's writing from Letterman <laughs> yeah. and Simpsons," and we would go into the meeting, and the people's faces would drop. Like, <laughs> yeah, because you hear like old. some yeah writers from Saturday Night Live and Letterman. People assume it's like these twenty nine year old guys are going to uh-huh. come in, yeah, and then uh, they're severely disappointed. Well, people, have, you know, I mean, you guys, <laughs> and also, know. also, it's kind of a sham for us to like be saying we're Saturday Night Live writers because we haven't been there since seventy nine eighty. It's not like when we were there, we really. I uh, did a lot of great well, stuff. Well, what was that like? Because I, I, when I was doing the research, I found out it was kind of the last season before that first generation yeah. ended. And then it was like, was it the, the last season before it turned into like Denny Dillon and Gilbert Godfrey and yeah, yeah that's producer? Right. It was season five. And so everyone was going like, oh, let's face it. This is the last season. How much longer can this show go? <laughs> wow. And didn't uh, Lauren Michaels, ba- like that was, he left, right? Yeah. Like, so you guys were there for that whole. Was there drama? Yeah. Was what was going on? Intrigue? That you can remember. Yeah, we there... left with, well, I mean, for us, it was. I mean, just the fact that we had a job right out of college was so amazing. So we we enjoyed every day of it. But I think the other – most of the writers and actors had been there for th- – that was their fifth year and they were all planning movies and things they were going to awesome. do. So they were kind of on the way out while we were still like, wow, we have a job. This is yeah. so cool. Yeah. But we knew we knew with Lauren going the next season was going to be a disaster, which <laughs> which it was. And so we – we were smart enough to leave then. We declined to stay, but Lauren Lauren was nice and gave sort of movie deals to all his, the people he liked from the show. So we we wrote, wrote like a movie script that we were paid for. With, what movie? With a, a, a small amount of money, which in those days was you know kept us alive for a year. I think. Yeah, the yeah. Show. It wow. was a, the premise. It was for MGM. It was called They Are Us, and the premise is it was this couple living in New York and a brownstone and they they had rats in their house and they realized they weren't rats they shaved one and it was a tribe of miniature people <laughs> what yes. which we described as an evolutionary cul-de-sac why isn't this getting made yeah oh, we've been well. trying to get it made for 30 God, years Jack, it, it, mgm Hollywood. owns it it was actually you know bought and paid for by by lauren and mgm 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, wow. we, wrote, we wrote it in your apartment, but we thought, like, oh, we don't need a job. We're writing a movie. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, oh, uh, so that's why you left Saturday Night Live. It wasn't because you're like, oh, this ship is sinking. Well, well, like, we decided to sort of go with Lauren's people. And we worked for him again. We worked on, like, Steve Martin specials mm-hmm. and things like that. So we, were, we, we, we figured it was better to be in Lauren's camp, even without a regular job, than stay at the show, which uh, but also, Gene Domanian was running. Yeah, the yeah. person running it was Gene Domanian that next year, and she had no comedy experience. She'd yeah. been on the show, and she'd been very nice, but... So when she she actually had a meeting with us because there was really no reason for us to leave because why were we leaving? You know, we didn't have any place to go. Yeah. And she said, uh, so I'm recasting. Um, what do you think about the fat guy from Animal House? And we said, you mean uh, John Belushi? No, no, the real fat guy. I want to get him. <laughs> she, she was Stephen Furst? Stephen Furst. Is that the yeah. guy who throws up in the... It's uh, Flounder, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was one of the pictures. So if you stay yeah. at the show, you can write for Stephen Furst. <laughs> You're insane to leave. Of, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and then, but then, you know, then while she was there, they got Eddie Murphy and, you know, the uh, show. Right, right. But, up. I mean, some people yeah. thought we were crazy. You know, it's just like kids. Like, why would you leave this paying job at NBC? But... Uh, the people who had been really f- nice to us at when we got the job, like James Downey and Franken and Davis, they all left. So they said, like, you know, if you're, if you're one of us, you'll leave the show and we'll just go ah. do projects. So, which turned out to be a good Yeah, so wait, who, was a good ca- What was the cast? Who was the cast when you guys were writing? It was- when we were there, it was it was the one year that Bill Murray was the, the absolute star of the show because he had been, you know, cause since Belushi and Aykroyd had just left. So it was he was kind of like the one white star because Garrett was, I think, the only male in the cast other than him yeah, they I mean, used harry tom Shearer. davis on they hired harry Shearer, who left and then came back with martin short during the dick ebersol period mm-hmm. a few years after that and frank and davis and jim downey were in the show a lot that season yeah so they wound up using a lot of writers kind of in the cast because it was a small cast but gilda was still there yeah. and, and what you know, was she like she was great she yeah. was really funny Aww. yeah uh, she mean, just done a broadway show and she was, I mean, everyone was, was really nice to and us. And since we were like the kids on the staff, so people were incredibly nice to us. You know, yeah. so I mean, any, I think they were just impressed, like, oh, you know, any, anything we thought was mildly funny, they go, oh, nice try, you guys. You know, that kind of, <laughs> so they were, they were like, it was great. Oh, my God, that's what so What were cool. your most notab- notable um, skits that, you, that like made it to the air? We we helped uh, Downey and Frank and Davis with some sketches. Yeah, we started, but we wrote but, a bunch of things. I, yeah. I mean, off the top of my head, I had to talk to I, I your grandparents. To, was one of them. Yeah, we wrote with Frank and Davis a lot. My, my, my b- biggest memory was not was, was like the little bits they'd let the writers do as acting. You know, because I can't even remember the sketches we wrote. But they always just needed people, so we would just be in crowd seats and stuff. But I got I got to be in a scene with Burt Reynolds. That that really impressed my <laughs> That's parents. Awesome. Frank and Davis had written this uh, sketch about a Roman vomitorium. And I was I was in the beginning of the sketch puking my guts out, and Burt Reynolds during the rehearsal came over and said, "Wow, that is some good puking. Keep vomiting." You know? <laughs> and I just remember thinking that's kind of cool, like getting <laughs> vomiting advice from Burt Reynolds. And then I got to spend a, a day getting huge latex makeup to play a monster in a scene, and and, uh, and that was a sketch we wrote with Gilda with the monster right. in the closet. And David Bowie was the musical guest that week, and he kept coming over oh, and like man. putting his fingers on my face, going, "Wow, that is really cool!" Like as if I think he wanted to hire the makeup guy to do stuff for his, yeah. his yeah, concert. Course. And while we were wow. there, uh, wow. while we were there, the Grateful Dead were there. I was going to wow. just ask you, the musical and, guests, uh, who did you get to see? Yeah, and they were actually when they came, they they hung around for a few days. Usually, the musical guests would come and then uh, rehearse and come yeah. back. But they came with their whole family and uh, all their families and stuff, and they were just sort of hanging around. And then the Hell's Angels were hanging around too. And then with the Grateful Dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> wow. then the, the next week, I'm walking down, uh, I'm walking down a street in New York, and I hear like honk honk, and it was a Hell's Angel coming up, like, hey, how you doing? Wow. Yeah, it was, it was it cool was to really be able cool. to. Uh, yeah, I remember meeting because Frank and Davis, who were huge Deadheads. I'm sure Senator Frank and loves people talking <laughs> about this, but they were huge Deadheads and would you know follow them around and go to see them at the pyramids in Cairo and everything. And Tom Davis said, "You're, you're gonna love this. The Dead is coming. They're my best friends." Uh, and I said, yeah, I got to admit, I'm really, you know, I listen to a lot of music. I'm not, I've never been that much of a deadhead. Um, I shouldn't meet them. And, and he said, no, 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 Jerry loves meeting people who hate their music. And well, no, I, I didn't say I hate it. So when they came to the show, Davis drags me over to Bob Weir and goes, this is Max. He hates you guys. He thinks you suck. And I was really kind of freaking out. But, yeah, they were perfectly nice with it. They didn't, they didn't care that I wasn't a fan. He, he Jerry actually, kind of rushed forward and go, oh, hey. He was hey, right. Oh, but it, right. It's but really it, weird yeah. to, to, you know, be One introduced to superstars like, who, and being told, like, you he hates you. Yeah, yeah, that's and such an interesting uh, thing. Like those guys must have been real. Yeah, the, the, for them to just there's that's so level headed for them to actually like like that. You know what I mean? Like they're like ah, you know whatever. Like, and it was cool because they had like they, they had their kids there running around too, and one of the moms or a girlfriend or something was saying like oh. 
Joey was roughhousing and he knocked over, remember this, a big jar of acid and, well, yeah. someone got on his skin, so <gasps> we've been up with him all night. And, and what? It, it, it oh, was I like, bet that happened all the time. <laughs> it was a sort of, wait, 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 LSD or like something? No, LSD. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, really? yeah. They kept it in a big jar? Well, it's not like the dead travels with hydrochloric acid. It was yeah. acid acid. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, but burning his flesh jar. Off. She, might have, she might have been doing a bit, but it was. Uh, no, I remember being oh weird. Oh, my God. Did you go see them at that, they were like at some basketball court. Does this ring a bell yeah, with you? Yeah. And and yeah, I remember thinking this is kind of weird. Like it was the dead and all their girlfriends and all their kids, and they were all sort of mixed up. It, it really did seem like one crazy communal family, like a yeah. cult. And this was you got to remember this was like the late <laughs> seventies, so it was like the sixties were over by then. Yeah. And it was kind of like the last vestige of uh, like like the dead in terms of like pop history couldn't have been sort of less cool in that era because really? it was kind of the heart of like punk stuff. And yeah. So the fact that like. They were still hanging in there, you know. I think it was it was a testament to like Franken and Davis's loyalty to the group, yeah. and then I, they I sort of got, got cool yeah. again. I got a good uh, John Belushi story. The, yeah, is he yes, saying anything crazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 our very first show, um, Peter Aykroyd, Dan's brother, uh, was ringing on the show then, and we were friends with him. And after the first show, he said, "Hey, my brother Dan and John just opened this little bar. It's called the Blues Bar, and it's this little shack down in uh, in uh, Soho." Um, after the show, uh, go on down there and knock on the door and you can go to this party. So I was really excited. Like right after the show, I ran down there and I knocked on the door and the only person there was John Belushi. And I was like, and I, I was just out of college. I was like, hi, uh, I got invited to this place. And he was like, fuck you. And he slammed the door. And then I walked home. And then one day Peter Ackroyd was like, where were you? I said, well, I went and John Belushi didn't let me in. And he's like, what? This is an outrage. And then literally the next day, John Belushi came to Saturday Night Live and says, where is that kid? Buddy, I'm so sorry. Hey. And then he was like my best friend. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, just thought, he just thought you were just on the street, so like, yeah. wandering. Yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't realize that you were with the show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. And, but then after that, whenever he saw me, he's like, hey, there you are. You know. <laughs> he's really trying to make up for it. Yeah, it was really great. That's hilarious. It, it was really funny. Uh, the whole year was pretty, you know, since it was our first kind of real job out of college, it gave us a very skewed vision of what like the adult world was like because it was you know saturday night live everybody i mean every it was like this little enclave in the nbc building which was the, the, the then rock, the, then the rca building wow. yeah in the 30 rock with all these like bankers and stuff there was two floors where snl was so everyone on those two floors was like walking around smoking pot all the time and there was like free beer and <laughs> drinks it was just like true. a big party all the time uh, so yeah. we just figured Oh, this must be what the adult world is like. Like <laughs> working in business. an office is, is yeah. what it is. So every every job we've ever had since then has been like this very sobering. Like the, the next show we work at was Letterman, and that was like working at a bank. Yeah, because, really? Because like, you, you weren't allowed to yeah. drink beer in the office. Oh, and, wow. So it was very like, the, yeah. Like, like, who, who, how come the culture was like that in SNL then versus Letterman? I, that- well, because it was the last gasp of the – like, you know, when Lauren started the show in 75, it was still kind of like the 60s ethos yeah. on TV. It was the first show to kind of – get that spirit they, they tried to do things that weren't like laughing and carol burnett and things that the older writers had worked on from the 60s so it was like you know a rock and roll show yeah. plus it's a so, weekly show and a comedy sh- a sketch show as opposed to like a nightly regimented yeah. like you know monologue sort of like throwback to old time you know steve allen late night talk show thing right yeah. i mean yeah, what, what was cool too which is screwed you up in terms of future jobs you would work the week there was a show but if there wasn't a show that week People didn't even come into the office. Yeah. Yeah, so you would basically working 22 weeks a year. And then they would just rerun the show so you would get the residuals back when, you know, you could still make residuals on TV. Wow. Yeah, when you so, work on those kind of shows, like late night shows and talk shows, you get more – you make more – when you stay home because you're getting paid your salary plus they're showing reruns that yeah. week. So like all the like Letterman and, and Leno writers and stuff make more on a night. They're well, not they working. did back, back wow. in those days. Were you on Letterman when Harvey Pekar was on? I think so. Yeah, right. he was there the first. Yeah. We were there the first couple of years. Were, yeah, and he yeah, came yeah. on. Yeah, no, that was a cool. I think that was a Mulsey a Mulligan booking because yeah, they, they they had much cooler guests in the old days than they do now. Because yeah. now it's just sort of the corporate. Well, I was going to say, I mean, and, uh, you know, you guys started at Letterman at the beginning of that show, so that was sort of another groundbreaking comedy uh, show yeah, they, to be on at that time, right? Well, Letterman had already done the uh, morning show with Meryl Marco. Yeah, and so they broke a lot of the ground there. We, uh-huh. we just sort of continued breaking ground. But it was <laughs> it's like, funny we didn't digging down. We didn't really think of it as too groundbreaking. You know, it seemed more. Also, you know, like it, it was the early '80s, so the the tide was getting kind of more conservative and, and more popular. It, it, it seemed a lot more. I mean, because that when we were there with George, that was always our grumpy. You know, like you couldn't do kind of crazy stuff that you could at Saturday Night Live. Although at the time, Saturday Night Live wasn't 
that good, I don't think. But what so was really good like, then was uh, Second City TV was going on. And so everyone was like, oh, my God, that show is so funny. And But the producer yeah. of, of Letterman was the SCTV producer, yeah, this Barry guy, Sand. Barry Sand, yeah. who we, we were all disappointed to learn was just kind of the business line producer, uh-huh. not the writing funny producer. Uh-huh. But, yeah, no, like the thing with with the Letterman show, yeah, that was really a great job. That I think we were so spoiled by how incredible Saturday Night Live was. It felt like, oh, you know, we can't drink beer, and now we have to do a show every <laughs> night. And yeah. I, I don't think we appreciated it as much. I mean, if we had that job now, we'd be, uh, I think, much more appreciative of it. What did you guys – Leap from uh, from Letterman. What, where did you guys well, go? Well, we, we left Letterman. Actually, a bunch of the writers left. Like, the first wave of writers left at the same time. We actually went to go work for Lauren again downstairs. Uh-huh. They were doing this hybrid show called The New Show, which was supposed to be the best of doing Saturday Night Live, but without the stress of doing it live. Got and it. it actually turned out to be the worst of both worlds because it had, it had all the preparation and aggravation of doing sketches, but without the kind of extra pump you get from a live audience. Yeah. So the, the great thing about SNL that people forget is there's no post-production. There's no editing. You know, when the, the show wraps at one, that's it. Everyone goes home. They, you know, they do some sound work and stuff, but that's really – it so when you do it when you try doing that like oh let's shoot three hours of sketches and edit it down it's it's a huge drag yeah and i think a lot of it was lauren had just started his company called broadway video this big post-production company so there was work involved for everyone yeah but But, yeah uh, the new show was not um not anywhere near as who's the cast of that see people have never people your age you kids have never (laughs) heard of the new show it was on in the fall of 83 and it was actually this very heralded show it also taught us never to do publicity because before it came on like new york magazine it was like this very hyped show like lauren is back baby and he's got this great show yeah and if you look at the cast you go this thing should have been the biggest hit of all time what was was i talking about publicity though (laughs) so this was in like 1984 yeah. And I found I was cleaning out the house, and I found an old New York magazine that had an interview with the new show. And the and the cover of the New York magazine in 1984 was a computer in your house? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! Wow, that's, I want oh, that wait, magazine. Wait, who, who was the cast? Of oh, that? so the yeah. the cast was um, it had it was kind of SNL with sort of rotating hosts, but they were. Yeah. Steve Martin, like the general cast was Dave Thomas and and Buck Henry, right. and, and all, a bunch of the writers from Saturday Night Live. Steve like Martin us. did a few shows. Steve Martin did a few shows. Catherine O'Hara, a lot of SCTV people yeah. were on. Yeah, Gilda Radner. But like Kevin Klein was. Well, on. What was really cool is that John Candy was there. Oh, John the, Candy. The week a lot. that Splash uh, came out, it was uh, that came out on a Friday, and he had been there the week up, and it was so amazing. Like the day that that movie was released, it was just like walking down New York. The New York streets with him, he was just getting mobbed and stuff. Yeah, it was wow. really cool. He was such a great guy and really did some really uh, hilarious stuff on the show. If you can dig up, well, I don't know if it's on DVD. Yeah, I don't know. I think they it, the show got kind of buried. A couple of sketches are floating around on YouTube, but like uh, we met Jack Handy there. He came in from uh, Santa Fe to work yeah. at the show and wrote some really funny stuff for for. Uh, and, I, the, and you know, at the time, I mean. We were like 25 at the time, mm-hmm. and it was a flop. And we thought our we were our careers were ruined and stuff. But well, they they were. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> but uh, there were just some really hilarious moments too. Even like uh, hilarious and how things were going wrong and stuff. I was going to say I I didn't I honestly didn't even realize till maybe recently that Jack Handy was a real person. I always thought that whole the oh, deep, deep thoughts. thoughts. No, I no, thought no. that was a character. Handy. I thought it was like a, they somebody made up a character. Jack Handy just did the voice. No, no, he's a real guy. He had been a Steve Martin writer and uh-huh. actually wrote a hilarious the first draft of Three Amigos, which is one of the funniest scripts I ever read. His version of it, not uh-huh. the, the movie that opened, but. Um, well, he's, he's great. Was okay. Yeah, it was a perfectly good movie, but his script was hilarious. Yeah. And uh, no, no, he's he's very real. He yeah. started writing those deep thoughts like for National Lampoon, and then those are so I used went to back memorize to Saturday those. Night yeah. Night I watched Saturday Night Live. The, yeah, um, they're great. Clowns are kind of oh, scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one was my favorite. The, the one year, yeah. turn, okay. <laughs> one year he actually uh, sublet my apartment in New York when uh, we were living in L.A. And when I moved back in, I found all these file cards with half of the deep thoughts. It was like the setup, like. When you're a cow- <laughs> when you're a cowboy, you should, and then it would stop. But you could, <laughs> see, that was just, that's amazing. Uh, you gotta yeah. get frame those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. Wow. Well, you know, it's interesting because now that I think about it, like SN, like that's the thing I don't understand is, and I know that this is sort of that old fogey way of me thinking. I don't think it's as they, they don't do stuff like that anymore. Like there's that surreal, weird kind of humor now. Like I watch it now, and I'm just like. Where is that kind of deep thoughts kind of oh, stuff? I, I, a little bit of the kind of digital video. I, I, th- I think it's hilarious now. I think I mean like Kristen Wiig. I think the cast. Yeah, is, she's. I mean the performers are. Oh great. my god! I think the cast now is funnier than it's ever been. But it seems like they don't have like that writing, like that that, that really surreal, like the unfrozen caveman lawyer. Yeah, that's like mm-hmm. a deep bizarre, thoughts. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, just like what the fuck is this idea? Like, yeah, that that some of that stuff from that era is just 
absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, I think if you talk to like Jim Downey, the people who've been there for 30 years, it sort of goes in waves. Like when they have a really strong cast, like they do now, I think the cast tends to run things. So yeah. you, you service their characters. And then when they have a weaker cast, it becomes more of a writer's show yeah. where they can kind of do weirder ideas because it's not like you know, the actor can just play more stuff. It's not like people are demanding to see, you know, Gilly or, or you know, yeah, a character yeah, yeah, they really yeah. love. So. Yeah. Is there going to be a section in this um, interview about Steve Martin? How about now, Jackie? Go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. What do you want to know? I want to know stories about him. Is he he's really an asshole. No, 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 no. We, we haven't worked with him for 20 years. But, yeah. he was, but I mean, what was it like when you worked with him? He, we met him like our first hour in show business. Incredibly so we were, you nice. Know, yeah. I mean, if you went to college like we did, in the, like our college years coincided with SNL coming on yeah. and watching Steve Martin and Bill Murray and all those people in the 70s. So when we got this job, it was like, oh, all, the, all our heroes that we actually – think are funny yeah we're working with the first day so he he was great he was an incredibly nice guy and, and he was really at like the peak of his fame yeah too when yeah. we met him because i think the jerk had just come out maybe and yeah. wow. oh my god no and he, he, we, he let us like sit in the room as he was writing pieces and we would pitch stuff and he was always really nice about you know if anybody didn't like it he'd nod and go like yeah maybe that could work it was it was yeah because we, we'd met him and thought you know your instinct is like oh i'm here to like get these people coffee or something and it's like no 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 you're supposed to be writing the show with them man so you guys work nice. with everybody but he uh <laughs> he if you haven't read his book you know born standing up that's a really great book i yeah. haven't i'll read yeah. it i'll read it did I you want... work with, oh justin i was just gonna say was there anybody in that time that was an asshole to you absolutely <laughs> <laughs> <Did we> throw <laughs> anything at you <laughs> yeah yeah but and can quite... you throw them under the bus now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to get names on oh. with a microphone. Well, how about, how about, yeah. Describe them? Yeah. 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 yeah, what do they look like? No, I'm kidding. How about just say the characters they played? We yeah, don't have no, to say no, their no. names. but um, No, in terms of the characters, not, not really. Or just anybody. I mean, no, 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 I mean, it was fun, though. I mean, like like Bill Murray yelled at us deservedly. I mean, we would write a shitty sketch, and it would be bombing. And at one time, he came over, and Max and I were standing there. He started yelling at us, and I realized, well, I could walk away, and Max will still be standing here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then he can come back, and yeah, then you can walk away. Yeah, so that, that's where I really realized the importance of having a, a writing partner. Yeah. yeah. No, were yeah. you guys just childhood friends? Or, or? No, we met, no, we met at college. At college. You saw, okay, okay. But wait, you're saying you... You wouldn't have been partners if it wasn't for that first economic yeah, decision. Daddy, yeah, <laughs> no, we up. wouldn't have even been in the business. I mean, like your your dream was to be a cartoonist, or you right. were going to go work at Hallmark, and, you yeah. and I was going to go to medical school. So we, I just figured, wow, a chance to work at Saturday Night Live. I guess I'll, you know, I'll do this for you. I'll, in, as long as I can keep getting work, I can put off medical yeah. school. This yeah. would be great. And my, uh, and I, I had taken a semester off, so. Um, when I was offered the job at SNL, I hadn't graduated yet, and my parents were like, "Oh, just tell Mr. Michaels you'll come after you get your diploma." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah, I know exactly because I never got my diploma. And certainly in show business, you don't need. I don't think you need yeah, a diploma. No, I, I, I don't have one either. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't graduate college. Justin didn't graduate college. Yeah. Jackie, I did. oh, yeah. Jackie well, did. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> dee dog. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was a maniac here. I mean, I mean, I'm, we're we're gonna get to the specifics, but that's actually something I was wondering because because going through, I mean, next, you know, you did Seinfeld. Simpsons, since all this, what, what? How do you go from one job to the next? I mean, how have Is you managed to continue to get to the great shows like one after another? No, well, they're good. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you do a lot of flops in between. I mean, uh-huh. especially like after Seinfeld, lots of people were saying like, "Oh, we want these guys. They're they're so funny." And then they'd hire us, and it's like, what? You know, we were lucky that like Jerry and Larry David thought we were funny. Jerry Seinfeld, and Larry yeah. David. And we're lucky that the Simpsons people think we're funny. And but there's a lot of people out there, you know, executives and. Uh, other people who don't think we're funny in there are <laughs> <laughs> you've been shielding for so many years yeah. or, 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 or you get caught up with people who think you're funny who are making something that's horrible and then you're like oh you know what else it was like 30 years ago comedy wasn't quite the you know industry it is right. now, I mean now it's like Toyota I mean they're just like yeah. film schools churn out comedies when we were in college it wasn't a, a, a vocational aspiration that was realistic for most people I don't think you know, every college had people going like, "Oh, I'm going to be a TV comedy writer." It, like today, people say it like you're going to go to law school. Or, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, especially in the '90s when they're like every network had ten sitcoms and and there were like five networks and stuff, and and every sitcom had twenty writers. That's yeah. when there were yeah. a lot. And then in came game shows and reality shows, and a lot of those guys went to law school. Yeah, when we started out, there the, the shows and pilots far outnumbered the writers writing them. So, like when we came out here in the late '80s, you know, there were. I mean, you, you turn down lots of work. It's every network made 100 pilots every year. Oh, man. And we were calling our friends in New York, like, get out of here. There's more jobs than you possibly rush. imagine. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, no, like, we were uh, lucky because when Letterman started, he was really looking for people. And we knew a lot of funny people 
from college, and so we were able to get a lot of people jobs. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I was going to say, is yeah. it more about who you know, like your connections, and you just happen to be friends with these talented, funny people, or is it like would you submit something and they go, oh, we want to meet these guys and then bring them in? We probably a little, a little of both. I mean, you know, the, we're from like this sort of lampoon mafia that that uh, you know we're probably on the on the older edge of it. But there are a lot of a lot of people that worked on that magazine. That's going out on the limb. Probably okay. We're by far the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Fred Gwynn and, uh, yeah. died, I think. Yeah. yeah. How did that start? The whole Harvard comedy like but, but mine. That- where everybody came from well, Harvard. Well, when we were there in the 70s, this guy, Jim Downey, was the first person that, and I didn't even know him that well, but like, well, somebody who had, was on the magazine and graduated a few years ago got a job at Saturday Night Live, and that just, like, wow, we knew someone in TV that just mm-hmm. blew people away. Because if you weren't from L.A., if you didn't go to, like, UCLA Film School, you just don't have any, yeah. even, in, even in New York and Boston, which are perfectly big cities, you don't really feel... Like, oh, it's realistic to want to work in TV. It's just, you don't yeah, know I mean, how to do it. It's, yeah, the dream was, I mean, this new D-Lampoon, people wanted to work at the New Yorker, and the other people wanted to work at the Na- Na- National Lampoon, which was big back then. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, if you wanted a profession in comedy, National Lampoon was, like, you know, the, the, the possible job you could have, and that would pay you, you know, a few hundred dollars, and you could live in a crummy apartment in New York or something. Mm. But, but the idea of, like, oh, I'll just, I'll join the Writers Guild and work for a TV show. It's You might as well have said, like, I'll go work in, for NASA and go mm. to the moon. I'm going to go be, not, I'm going to work for the circus. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, but, and you know, were, but since yeah. we've been doing this, it's like, there's certainly, like, a UCLA group and an NYU film group. And, you know, I mean, there are, it seems like communities. And, you know, oh, yeah, and today yeah. it's like there's the UCB gang, yeah. and Groundlings people. And, you know, if you're in any kind of group like that, you know each other and you tend to go, oh, you know who'd be great for this yeah, part? The, the fat totally. guy we know should be the fat guy in the movie, <laughs> not the yeah. fat guy you know. That is, that's, so. I think that is what it is. It's these little crews that form. And that's yeah. sort of, if you're not in one of these crews, you're sort of really having to struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you guys ever had a breakup where you're like, I'm never going to write with you again? <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> this is it. We're going to walk out that of here. That would be great if it happened over this one. But yeah. for real, have you guys ever had a separation? <laughs> I don't think we work enough for it to, you know. Yeah, oh, I mean, okay. the thing is, uh, we haven't been so incredibly successful. Like, we're not ar- arguing about hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> right, right, right. So. If we had more to fight over. Yeah. We'd, well, what about a joke? Like, you want to do a joke mm-hmm. one way and you want to joke, do a joke the other way? Is there any of that it kind of stuff? Never forget. Well, Max is pretty uh, expressionless. He doesn't really get worked up about stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> one time, uh, actually, one, one time we were driving. Uh, Boiling rage. Yeah, and I wasn't really paying attention, and I ran a stop sh- sign, and literally this truck was zooming right at Max, and his reaction was, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't really hear him get Wait, so if Tom shuts, shoots a joke down that you love, Max, it's just kind of like, just kind of. It doesn't bother you. You just kind of stuff it down, or just kind of roll off your back. The jokes usually aren't that good to get <laughs> too passionate fighting. about. Or no, you know, usually, them. usually, like teams break up because one of them wants to, like, you know, write a Broadway show, and the other one, uh, you, know, you know, like it's not like we're that ambitious. It's like, if, you know, <laughs> well, Tom, you're more of a performer, though. I, I, I enjoy filming you for the Learn to Draw yeah, that's, thing. So that's, you know, that's, yeah, which it's, it's, it's not like yeah. we're in competition to be stars or anything like that. So. Right. That's been, but you know what? I mean, one thing we've that's we've been able to stay in the business for so long is we never really used to give interviews. This is sort of like a new thing in the last two years. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And we never. Is that true? Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it's been like when you're working on a show, the performers don't want to hear read interviews with the writers. Yeah. Stuff, you yeah, know? It's yeah. Just like, oh, that was why you didn't do it. It's more for that out of respect to the show. Well, just, well, also, we've never I've never read an interview with any writer where I thought the writer came off. Well, like, I, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and also, it, I've never read anywhere. I any any article like if Vanity Fair does some, show, you know, article about The Simpsons or something. Where, where I actually knew what happened and knew the real story, even the best article is like 60% right. Uh, so I figured, yeah. like, wow, if they, yeah. you know, they, and and this is this is show business where you have publicists and people giving you all this information. It just makes me think if I read an article about something serious, like you know the economy or war, you realize like it must all be wrong. Yeah. So anything you say is going to be filtered. Like you know the Bob Woodward book about Saturday Night Live. It's like yeah. everything I read, I always go. They so get this wrong, and and, and comedy writers that I know are really funny always come off horribly, especially yeah. in the in the Writers Guild magazine. Oh, there's you know, nothing like, more depressing than the cover of the Writers Guild magazine. It's always <laughs> just what's, some, on the, what's on the cover? It's just it's a, a, a headshot of some loser writer. And, it could be like AARP <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, for the yeah. senior citizens. Yeah, but in, actually, in, in 1987, Rolling Stone approached us and said, we want to do a story about you guys as the hottest comedy writers in Hollywood. And, and like, talk about like how to get hated in yeah. uh, Hollywood. Did you, like, do Did you no, do it? No. no. Oh, yeah, we we just like, laughed at the guy. Like, you're out of your mind. Like, why, you know, 
Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, it doesn't. What everyone's was like, oh, look who it is. It's yeah. the hottest, <laughs> the hottest <laughs> writers in Hollywood. I mean, you, it's just like, you might as well title the article, hey, every other writer, come punch me in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But, you know, like uh, when we worked at Seinfeld, we weren't going to give interviews because, you know, it was uh, Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David show. And, you know, when we're at The Simpsons, there are other people who can give interviews. Yeah. I mean, just recently I've been doing it to plug my comic strip on Go Comics. So well, sp- yeah. speaking of Seinfeld, uh, there's a ton of questions. We, we actually watched a few episodes. I mean, we, we've seen them all before, but just to refresh some of the ones that you guys wrote, uh, the um, Cigar Store Indian one, that yeah. they, they wrote that one. Yeah, that was actually based on I bought a uh, Cigar Store Indian. and my next A full-size one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Where did uh, you find it? It was, I don't know, it was, it was back in the 80s. Those yeah. things popped up. And my, my, my next door neighbor came over who's a Native American. So, like, you know, this is really offensive. And I had no idea. So, so the whole was, premise stretched with the with the Jerry's girlfriend was all coming out of that? Yeah, that's where oh, it came man. out of Amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, it's every, jo- every, every single time, like, you guys pretty much hit every single possible, like, reference to Native Americans with, like, reservations and... <laughs> Uh, Indian giving like that's the cult, that's the final one. But then there was another. One. What was the other one that was really good? It's like w- w- scalping. Oh, scalping ticket scalper. <laughs> yeah. But um, that was. Uh, and by the way, when you say we, it's, it's the, the the room, right? Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of Larry David and, and Jerry. Yeah. And all well, this. that's what I wanted to ask you guys about the the actual process process of, of of an episode. So I mean, clearly the the one of the threads of that episode is from you with with this cigar store indian so did you just pitch that and then it sort of no and it originally it was a it was a moose head yeah. and and larry thought no it should be something with a little more like political or yeah jerry bite thought a moose head was too i love lucy no no mm-hmm. you know what he thought because there's a famous woody allen routine about right. a moose head and he said oh, oh, yeah. i don't, don't want to be ripping off woody allen not you know not that it was the same idea yeah but, yeah yeah and 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 larry said you know the moose head is just kind of neutral you, you need something where there's a little more bite to it so you know but with something with some racial connotation so we figured that yeah, Indian was better. Was like, what but else you know, could you like lawn jockey versus car, you know? Maybe like I'm, I'm sure lawn jockey was thrown in there, yeah. but it's but, uh, uh, but the Seinfeld uh, writing for that was different from um, uh, other shows because yeah, ch- we, basically our job was to write a, a first draft. <laughs> Justin did a sound. Uh oh! No, that wasn't me. That's what you're, happened? You're, it's re- I don't it's know. become sentient. Your sound my, effects. My, my sound vibrate. effects. Okay, continue. <laughs> I, I don't know what that yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have the headphones on, so I'm like, oh, it's, I'm okay. in reality. I'm in the real room, <laughs> not, yeah. not the yeah, ambient. We're in the matrix. Justin's, the uh, Justin's Hal uh, 9000 iPod just decided to do a little fart sound effect on its yeah. own. <laughs> Okay. Our, uh, our, our job at Seinfeld was to write uh, first drafts that were usable enough for then Larry, David, and Jerry Seinfeld to then take and rewrite them. And okay. Them Wait, what other episodes did you guys refresh? Because I oh, uh, the I mom and pop store you with. Were. Uh, were you born when Seinfeld was on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the, am I the oldest one here? No, you're the youngest one. Here. No, no, you're no, the middle. You're the middle, middle child. You're in the middle. Oh, which the makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes I'm the um, oldest. The mom and pop store. The the raincoats. The soup, right? Or no, am I no, getting confused? No, no uh, we did the pie. The and, pie. The, the, pie. And the, the pie, that was actually based on something that came out of uh, when I was in Little Italy. I was uh, in a restaurant, literally washing my hands in the bathroom, and the chef came out wearing a chef's hat and uh, left without washing his oh, hands. So good. And wow. That was a true thing. And I, I know we've said this in the DVD commentary, yeah. but, but uh, in the rehearsal, the chef was wearing the chef's hat, and Larry said, that looks too cartoony. And so they took off the chef's hat, and uh, where in real life he was really wearing. The wow, chef's hat. that's amazing! <laughs> that's amazing. So you come in and you oh pitch ideas, God. and then and then because you pitch the kernel of the idea, then you get assigned the script. Is that how? Well, it the, the the room worked very differently than most. Like something like this, this something like The Simpsons is totally sort of communally written. It's a, it's a group of like a dozen writers that are in there, and everything gets tabled. And most of the animation we work on kind of is like that now. But Seinfeld was more peculiar in that. Um, it didn't really have the typical writers room where everybody would sit together. All the writers would uh, would kind of work on their own, and Larry and Jerry functioned as a room. They would kind of float from office to office and work with each writer on their story. So wow. they, they would help shape it. If I can give my, my pompous comedy historian Please. take on the Seinfeld writing. It, it's funny since it, it's now so famous as like you know a, a classic sitcom. But it really – I think one of the strengths of that show is very few of the writers – had sitcom experience would c- consider themselves like s- situation comedy writers we were from late night jerry was a stand up you know larry charles and larry david were from fridays it was uh peter melman was like a sports illustrated writer who'd written for cosell yeah. and it was like not a lot of people you know it w- people weren't like aspiring to write 
the Mary Tyler Moore show or anything. You know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't. That's why it was we, so we did, good, though. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> no one had these preconceptions or these rules yeah, about how. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even you know, even we were considered like, oh, we had written, we had written for a similar show because we'd written for Chandling, but Chandling <laughs> was like a parody of a sitcom. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really. I, that was yeah. also like so. I Bell was from Saturday Night Live, so you know, it, it's weird that we've. You know, we, we got to work on a, on a good show like that without really being. I don't think of ourselves as sitcom writers. And yeah, but also, but The Simpsons and Seinfeld, when we were there, had no network interference. Um, because they so, got into that point now, yeah. we're like, please. Well, the, no, the genius of Jim Brooks at The Simpsons when he when he started uh, The Simpsons with Matt Groening and Sam Simon, he said, I'm, "We're never going to take any notes from Fox," and they never had to. So, like all that stuff at the beginning with. You know, Homer strangling Bart and stuff. Yeah. That would have never, you know, yeah. been able to make it. And by the time we got to Seinfeld, the fifth season, um, the executives were not giving notes at that point. They were just coming and laughing and enjoying the show. Just because they're like, well, I guess these guys know what they're doing, which is yeah, what, what are they, they going to do? Knew what you're yeah. doing the whole yeah, yeah, time, yeah. but then, yeah. you know, the money outweighed the <laughs> ability right, to right. leverage. Right, yeah, right. But, but there were a few years where there was, not, was the opposite of, you know, it was like, no, these guys don't know what they're doing, and they were always threatening to cancel it. But we missed <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. And they kept getting, getting notes. We weren't there, but we heard it's like, please just put more of a story in. You know, you can't do a whole episode about waiting for a table at a time. Or looking for so, your car that, in the parking lot. Yeah, garage. that's what's so frustrating is like meanwhile don't they get that if they just would let their hands go they would have a more successful show <laughs> like they're no, gonna they don't do their I mean, job more no but you know if there's layers of these guys that are hired to give you know if yeah, like, i have to, to justify go, their I, existence. I, I, I can't just leave the meeting and say good work and leave i have <laughs> yeah. to give 10 random notes or else yeah. i'm not they might fire me you know a, a really good book i were talking about the steve martin book for stand-up but also phil rosenthal wrote a book he's the guy who created yeah yeah i it. heard about that yeah that's a really good book just talking about it's amazing that show got on the air based on the notes he was getting and stuff. And what is it? What is it? Is it? It's just it's ex- called, his experience of, of getting yeah, that show on the air. Wow! I think it's called it's "You're called Lucky, like, You're Funny" think, or something. Yeah, <laughs> "You're Lucky, You're Funny." Because that's what his wife yeah. always says to him. Yeah. Wow. So that's a really good book. I, I read, by the way, uh, on uh, Wikipedia, so I hope it's accurate. But uh, something where we're on the according to the the said that on the on the Seinfeld DVD that. Larry David and Terry, Fein- Terry Seinfeld were at first nervous about your guys' <laughs> yeah. level of silliness that you bring to the show. We, uh, these writers the, the, you can fr- see how silly we are. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. The, the first script we wrote was The Glasses. And, uh, yeah, according to Jerry, they read it and they go, like, this is either really funny or really pathetic. Because of what, specifically? We just watched that today. Like, uh, the girl glasses and all that was too silly? I, I don't know. Well, the show wasn't really structured like that at that point. I mean, and... I and, think they were also just, you know, they were used to... The first couple of years of the show, Larry and Jerry with, you know, Larry Charles and Peter Melman more or less wrote like 95% of it. So I think... You know, Castle Rock thought we're, we're going to do you a favor and get get you some other writers just so just to oh, so, just so you can breathe happened? a little bit. You guys are kind of brought in at this point where they wanted to add more. Well, I think they, they the orders were getting bigger because they used to just get orders of like six at a time. And oh. I think you know Castle Rock had been trying to convince them. You know, Larry, you got to just you can't write every word. You'll yeah. you'll, you'll never get any sleep. They were just yeah. working so hard on the thing. So I think you know once they saw like oh other writers can kind of help out, then then the staff started getting a little bit well, bigger. We had yeah. also written a, uh, a Seinfeld spec script before we were on the air. Uh, on the show, and um, they didn't make it, but actually they used a, a chunk of it for a story, and they called us and said, hey, you're entitled to the story by thing. And we said, you know what, just use it, you know, because we were doing our own show at the time, and we knew how hard it was to, we, we don't deserve a story by it just yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think based on that, they liked it. So it's like, oh, these guys aren't going to be credit grabbing assholes until <laughs> 20 years later when they're doing interviews about how great this is. If If we were doing this interview and you were in your, your 20s, like, just starting. Would you be this like humble and? I yeah, don't I was going to say. Just really nice. I know. You I, seem normal. I, I, well, I think like like we were saying, it's not when we like the TV world we sort of came up in. I, I think was it just less competitive, or were we just so oblivious? We well, also, I mean, if, like, <laughs> if you're working in a room with other TV writers, you you can't be too obnoxious. You know, it's got to be. You got to. Yeah. So you know, uh, like um, the Simpsons. It's all really just sort of nice. Uh, uh, Pretty normal people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's so funny. When I was moving out of my apartment once, um, some movers said, uh, what do you do? I said, I'm a comedy writer. And then later, he was on the other mover saying, and he said, he says he's a comedy writer, but you wouldn't know it by talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> but so, you know, being a TV camera, you can't be like, it's yeah, not like yeah. anything like, not, hey! running around with an arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. Well, maybe does the cockiness or something ever come up when, like, you're working on a show that you feel is kind of, eh, not so great, and you're like, we worked on The Simpsons, we worked on Seinfeld, we know what we're talking about. Has that ever come up? Like, we worked on the iconic, greatest uh, comedy no, The thing is, we, we've been so lucky. We, we really haven't worked on a lot of things that we thought really sucked. And if we and if we got the impression it was going to be horrible or, the, or that there were bad people, we would just kind of not do it and leave, yeah. you know? Yeah. We're um, real quitters. And that yeah. didn't come up when you were it's, about to work with Justin? <laughs> didn't, what, no, listen, little, I will say, I, 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 I can, uh, I can, I can, uh, you know, vouch for them. They're very, very easy to work with and very humble and you know what I'm funny. Saying, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a pleasure. Well, I, <laughs> no, but it was frustrating because I was the fucking <laughs> asshole. Well, Jack, no, we've also had some of the greatest narcissists of the comedy world that's here. What I'm so. talking about, and it's just, it's very weird because yeah. these guys are actually yeah. they're real. I've heard you guys yeah. talk about Kathy uh, Griffith. Uh, we actually gave her her first uh, Seinfeld gig. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah, I, oh, yeah. We, we can take some responsibility for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we start uh, going. Yeah, that's what we did. I, yeah. I forget <laughs> where we I think it was a doll, maybe. But we had we read this, written the script, and we were uh, free auditioning people before Larry and Jerry saw them. And th- we spent all day hearing people, and no one was good. And it was like, oh, the the writing sucks. And then she came in and made it so hilarious. And then. Uh, uh, yeah, she she got hired like as soon as Larry and Terry heard her. Yeah, um, I knew her because she was a friend of George and Maria. So she right. came in and had read. And I said, oh, I met you at a party. And she was really funny. And I remember when she was on the show that week doing it, she was kind of bugging Jerry. But Larry was laughing his ass off going, how come she's not on Saturday Night Live? This girl's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, she turned what she did on Seinfeld into part of her act. Uh-huh. Remember? And then, so then, and then she was hired back to play the right. part again. So she actually became kind of like part of the little Seinfeld yeah. family. Universe, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. So you heard the Ken Osborne interview? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't <laughs> hear did that. They, What's they, that one? Did oh, they, they did it right. Yeah, I can't even remember. Well, one of yeah. our uh, guests and recurring, I guess, the writer who dated Kathy Griffin. Yeah, yeah. So, um, did it. So, so, so we're sort of hot. We're sort of skipping around between Seinfeld and Simpsons. We, we have Simpsons questions, don't we? Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, when did you come in? You came in, I think, two thousand. The Simpsons. Simpsons, nineteen ninety-eight. We were, we were, uh, we were unsuccessfully doing pilots for Twentieth Century Fox, and since none of our shows were getting on the air. They said, well, you know, you should work with one of our other shows that's already on. So we worked at – we actually worked at Futurama before we worked at The Simpsons. Oh, really? Yeah, we were yeah. two days a week at Futurama and two days a week at The Simpsons. Because we had known all those guys. I mean, most of The Simpsons guys are sort of lampoon friends Oh, of okay. So and, that was a case where your friends, your crew kind of brought you in. Yeah, and we actually we actually turned down – we could have worked on The Simpsons pilot, but we were doing our own uh, – We were doing Mar- a marionette, marionette show. We thought marionettes were the <laughs> Wait, what was the marionette show? Animation. Like a pilot? No, you know, it's funny because we worked with Sam Simon and Mike Reese and LG yeah. and Dave Merkin. Um, all on the old Gary Shandling show. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, I mentioned to Sam Simon, he denies it, but we used to sit around because we were so frustrated because mm-hmm. Gary Shandling would not read uh, stuff that was written. <laughs> he would just always like, read it once and then veer off. And we were saying, like, why can't we have characters that'll just, like, read what you say? Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, so I, but the way I tell the story, Sam went off and, and did uh, animation. And we went off and did a marionette. <laughs> right, but we, it was the, the idea was you know, wouldn't it, we used, wouldn't it be so great if Gary was just a puppet and would just say yeah. the things we wrote and he would you know it would really be funny. Yeah. So and we, so, anyways, we, I, I bet Sam that our marionette show would be more successful than his <laughs> cartoon show. Did you really? That's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's like uh, VHS oh versus Beta. It's like one of those classic. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Blu-ray versus HD <laughs> DVD. Well, what was that show? It, it was called the Red Pepper. It was a pilot for NBC, and the premise was. It was the star was a marionette whose mom was Audrey Meadows. We got the real Audrey Meadows, uh-huh. and the, his dad was like Howdy Doody, and uh, <laughs> so the show uh, was made. Phil Hartman did the, did the voice yeah. of the puppet. Oh yeah, my was, god, you have a copy of it? Uh, yeah, uh, oh man, <laughs> I want to see this. Uh, yeah, Dave, me too. Uh, David Letterman uh, was nice mm-hmm. enough to uh, appear. In it. Oh and, wow. Um, Ryan Stiles uh, had a small part from the Drew Carey show. Wow! And it was all marionettes. There's no humans at all. No, no, one marionette. Oh, one marionette. Oh, one marionette. marionette. So it's like a, it's a it's a, it's like it's like Tom Thumb. It's like a normal family who gives birth to a marionette. Right. right. And no okay. one, no one really. Qu- well, it was, yeah, it was it was an intermarriage. Okay. Audrey, oh, Howdy Audrey, Audrey was Meadows the married oh, Howdy okay. Doody, yeah. and the, and so you know the showgirl and the marionette had this kind of half marionette. Child. It was was it kind of fleshy a little bit? No, no. He looked like a normal marionette, but the joke, the premise was kind of no one really like looked up. Like he would get caught in ceiling fans and stuff, uh, you know. And, and, oh, he's actually literally a yeah. Man. And it, and, and uh, it was Don a huge Mi- production. Yeah. And, and Don Mitchell was the director. 
too. Um, right. The guy but, uh, he just directed the Oscars a few weeks ago. Yeah, oh, but wow. you know, yeah. Team America did much better than Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Team America did everything perfectly what we tried. Did you, you watch know, it and go, like, this was the dream? And no, but no, no, but it was no, funny. It was... You'd read interviews with Trey and Matt, and they'd go, this was the hardest thing we ever did. Yeah, it yeah. went, like, f- 50 times over budget. Yeah. It took them years to make it. And, you know, well, no one called us, but we could tell you work with marionettes. Yeah. It's not, not a wise career. Yeah. <laughs> but, so character. anyway, so we, we had signed this deal with NBC to do this pilot, and then Sam Simon Proxis said, hey, do you want to help me make uh, – you know, uh, turn. He wasn't offering his points or anything, but uh, w- w- then we yeah, were going to do The Simpsons as a series. You got, are you guys in? Yeah. And we were like, eh, it's funny. <laughs> the Simpsons funny for thirty seconds. I don't know. Whole show. <laughs> <laughs> the marionette set's going to be much. <laughs> one, of, one of our many great career <laughs> moves. And now Sam uh, has like a Rodan in his back. <laughs> right. So, yeah. now, so now every time we work at The Simpsons, which has been for twelve years, we're all working for Sam because he gets this huge royalty yep. from the show yep. now. So, yeah. so we all kind of spend the rest of our lives do, working. Do, wait, for when Sam. you guys were in early, the early Simpsons years, was that was 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 the Great Scott show prior to this, or or, or like concurrent to it? Uh, Great Scott was at, the Simpsons had already started. Yeah. I, mean, based, I mean, we didn't work on the no, Simpsons no. But I'm first. saying like when you oh, oh. when you got you guys had done Great Scott and then took the Simpsons job after that. that right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, no, Great Scott came about. That was like '92. That was twenty. So that's yeah, the show with Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire. Yeah. Young and, Toby McGuire. Yeah. And it's completely impossible to find anywhere. I ha- I found my VHSs because there was a flood in my guest house this week, so I, I had to find all these old tapes. But um, someone, there, a couple of them are floating around YouTube with someone at the Oh, they are? Oh, really? But they're really hard to find. And I think Toby, <laughs> the movie star, has kind of edited it out from his career. Like, if you read any interview with Toby, it's like, oh, I started exist. doing the ice storm. And, like, his career kind of started a few years after it Great started. Scott. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't like, like a lot of movie stars, you know, I think their publicists say, you never worked in TV. TV is for bad people and children. <laughs> and You're a, you were born a movie star. So you never see any mention of... Because uh, he also did that show, Eerie, Indiana. Right. It was kind of a yeah, Twilight I saw him thing in that. from yeah, 20 yeah, years yeah. ago. But Great Scott was in 1992, and, and one of the assignments from Fox is uh, they wanted a live-action Bart Simpson. Uh, oh, that was what you were trying to do? Yeah. And, God, but, I about that. Yeah, to- Toby McGuire is a lot of things, but he's not a live-action <laughs> uh, Bart Simpson. Yeah. He, he had a pretty quiet delivery. I mean, really smart guy. I mean... Oh, but the, but but you're he's being written as this bratty character, but then it's sort of he's the Tobey Maguire delivering well, it wasn't. Well, no, yeah, and and his sidekick is uh, Kevin Conley from Entourage. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. and he was great. And uh, Jack Black was in an episode. Oh really? Yeah, we I'm pretty a, sure we gave Jack Black his first TV job. Yeah, and uh, wow, we, we had some really funny writers. No, there were some uh, uh, funny episodes. It was on Sunday nights at seven. For six weeks. Yeah, for with six the, weeks. It was paired with the Ben Stiller show. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, my God. Wow. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I mean. That's... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one I remember. Yeah. I have it on DVD. God. Well, the great the great thing was, you know, we, we were on Sunday nights at 7, and Ben Stiller was on at 7.30, and the uh, the Fox promos all day would go like, you know, tonight on Fox, the laughs begin at 7.30 with the Ben Stiller show. <laughs> they would just completely leave us out. Wash of the, the taste equation. out of your mouth at 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the laughs begin <laughs> after, the uh, after this one show that we we have. And then we, uh, the way we found out we were canceled, we got a phone call from uh, Joe Davola, who worked at Fox, and said, "Hi, I, I really want to uh, uh, get a show with you on Fox." And said, "We already have a show on Fox." It was like, "Got to go." And like, oh. <laughs> oh my god! And, then, and we were in the middle of shooting a scene. We were at like this old pass factory in Culver City, shooting the show. And in the middle of the take, this realtor came by, like, showing off the studio to someone. Like, oh, yeah. here you could put your, the, you know, your, your put, drawers in there. Had to, and we had to stop shooting because they were hammering up a for rent sign. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh yeah. my God. Yeah. But everybody But, but actually, the thing. one fan of the show was Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. He said, oh, like, really? He said, like, when this show gets canceled, and it will, you should come work <laughs> over at our. Oh, it, that's it, how you got It was Castle yeah. Rock. It was a Castle Rock show. So uh-huh. that's why. It was so we funny because we were guys. like, while Great Scott was going on, people were saying, oh, you're never going to work again. This show is terrible. And then the next day we got a job at Seinfeld. It's like, oh, wait. The same people who didn't want to work with us say, hey, come develop a show with us. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. It's so funny so how was, fickle everyone is. In what, this. Wait, was Joe Devola the one that they based Crazy Joe Devola off of? Yeah, yeah. That was the name. Not the, the not character the was someone else, but they just yeah, liked his yeah. name. Oh, okay. Yeah, with Larry and Jerry, the best way to get stuff on was just to convince Larry and Jerry it w- they were true anecdotes. Like, they uh-huh. really like – I mean, most of the stuff on that show 
were things that really happened to somebody. You know, one of the writers that was like the old Carl Reiner said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd go in and actually, think. pitch funny ideas, and they wouldn't like them. And then at lunch, you'd say something that really happened to you, and uh, they'd say, "Hey, right. use that." Like my, I actually own the car that uh, I bought a car because they said it belonged to John Voight. Yeah, that's what I want to ask about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the, act, the dealer actually told you it belonged to John Voight. It, it not only, but he gave me the uh, the booklet <laughs> that said J O H N, and it was Max who said he spells his name J O N. And uh, uh, that was <laughs> that scene was basically verbatim yeah. in the show. Because yeah, because we watched this, we watch it today, and there's yeah. a scene where, where he's like, he's like, how do you know it belongs to John Voight? Like, like, and, and, and isn't George Eggman like, so specific? Like, if you said, if you said Liam Neeson, you wouldn't believe it. That's yeah. that's why it's clearly made up. Yeah, <laughs> so the, great. Um, that that car became like a recurring thing on the show. It was on several yeah. episodes, and then one day Tom was driving urethra, and the car blew up on you, right? It, yeah. No, what happened was I had gotten the oil change, and they had left the dipstick out or something, and then the car caught on fire. But then. <gasps> We were able to use it for one last episode uh, where it caught on fire and that one with the... Forget, with Ruthie, with the yeah, old lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So George, is, we, we had to catch fire on the show. Yeah. And then the real John Voight came on an episode. And like yeah. bit George or something? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. yeah, but we, we, we were so thrilled to get the real John Voight just so we could finally ask him, I mean, for real, uh, yeah. is that your car? And he looked at him and said, i never seen that car before. <laughs> <in my life." laughs> so. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, but the car God. paid for itself in that. In yeah, car, Really? Yeah. Why yeah. would the guy? Why would they? Yeah, why would they use John Voight to it sell It worked you? on me. I was walking away. He's so like, "Oh, by the way, uh, this is one of John Voight." Well, hello. Did you brag about it? Oh yeah, <laughs> I got the soundtrack to Midnight Cowboy and driving around. Blared it and just driving around. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Yeah. So what else do we? There's other questions, right? I mean, well, I, yeah, I was gonna um, ask about the Wonder Years. Oh yeah. yeah. Years. So yeah. we didn't real. I found this out today. I had no idea that you guys worked on the Wonder Years. Oh, we years. just wrote one episode. One episode. Right. You guys yeah, wrote yeah, the yeah, math yeah. class. The math season. But yeah, three. we introduced when that the teacher. Math Teacher dies? Yeah. No, we we oh, wrote no, the, no. we wrote the math yeah. teacher living. We created the character, yeah. and then, oh, then they killed him off. Yeah, oh, you like that was, show? Huh? Yeah, we were. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah, that's, oh, but you know, it's funny. It's such a. It, unfortunately, it, we were talking about this today. It'll never, no one will ever it. see it because it'll never come out on DVD. Well, they rerun the, it. They rerun. Well, they rerun it, they rerun it but they can VHS. never put it on DVD. Why not? Because the soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, there's too much music in. Oh my god! To license that for one season would would negate any profits they would make. We. Yeah, we wrote that when we were at Shandling, and one thing is we wanted to meet uh, Marlins and Black, who were the creators of the show. Okay, yeah. And uh, so we went in, and, and uh, the day we were there was a day like Marlins and Black had quit, and Bob Rush was running the show. Oh. So, yeah, we had pitched it, so we were there post Marlins and Black. Right, right. But, um, and yeah, I, I wanted to meet them too because they were from my town. Like the, oh, the, yeah. school, the, the school in the Wonder Years was like our rival high school. The, the one it's actually that the one they shoot at the one it's based off the, of. the one that was based on it was uh-huh. like a school on Long Island. Oh wow! So, so you guys grew up in Long Island. You guys grew up in. I, I'm from Huntington, New York. I'm from yeah. Darien, Connecticut. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so we were in the same at college. We had to watch the same local TV shows. Oh, ah. <laughs> so we had that to talk about. Yeah. That's so so time. so so you guys wrote the Wonder Years while you were at Shandling. And, and I remember it got it got very rewritten. I mean, we had it in the first draft and. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, we were just. We didn't like work at that show. We were. That was just. We were like freelance writers. Yeah. Uh, just, just the one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Episode. Uh, that that actually makes you wonder. Like, how many? Like, as all the shows you've worked on, which gets rewritten the most versus the least? You know what I mean? Like, there's certain, there's certain shows that are like, oh, that guy always rewrites everything, or he kind of takes it, and just kind of tweaks it. Yeah, it's case by case. You never, yeah. you know. I mean, I wish I could say like, oh yeah, this show is never work there because they'll, yeah. they'll ruin everything. It's. I mean, Simpsons so, shows get rewritten a lot just because, I mean, uh, especially an outside script written by someone who's not on the staff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, in Seinfeld, always uh, Larry Jer- and Jerry always uh, did a rewrite on that. Right. I mean, I, I always tell people, you know, everything you see on TV is communal no matter what. Mm-hmm. You, yep. you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. the writing credit doesn't really mean anything. And, yeah. You know, people are called producers who are really writers, and sure. people are called writers who don't even work at the show. And just, you know, it's all. And there are some I, shows I like Two and a Half Trek. Men, which is like literally written in the room. And we're working on this new Napoleon Dynamite animated show. Yeah. And we've been writing the episodes in the room, like just with a, like actually with a keyboard in the room, like someone's yeah. taking dictation. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's wow. very common. I mean, really? That, yeah. I mean, it's funny. It's, when we worked at Saturday Night Live years ago, it was like it was still like carbon paper, and so I mean, it yeah. was still you know there wow. weren't any computers anywhere. Yeah. And you kind of—I don't even know how they did it. When the Simpsons started, it was uh, 
uh, typewriters. Right. And then when people worked like in the 60s before, I mean, in the, like the golden age of TV in the 50s and 60s, there weren't even, there weren't, wasn't Xerox yet. So No, it's called the Mimeo. We're doing it, the Mimeo. Right. But I think actors had to kind of just remember changes more. And they, they oh actually used cue cards and stuff. But, you know, now, I mean... They, they, you know, if you if you change a comma, they'll just print up a new script for you because it's Jeez. just so easy to do. Back yeah. then, you could get a steak dinner for a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> a computer. The shows, in the were, were, <laughs> the shows were carved on stone tablets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, everything. I mean, you know, yeah, usually a writer's room. There's an assistant, you know, with a yeah, computer, and, and everybody yeah. kind of looks at the monitor and. It's kind of weird. Yeah, you, you know, I always find it hard to just look look at the screen with the script while people are writing. Yeah, it's just like, kind of like that gets deleted and the new line gets replaced in real time and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Man, that's well, what I want to do. Here's my 20-year-old stuff coming out. What was the, what was the funnest? Because this is what I fantasize growing up in Michigan, like all these shows, Seinfeld, Simpsons. What was the funnest show to work on? Like in the room, were there any shows where like you walk in, it's like that, that episode of Simpsons where Bart sees the Mad Magazine offices and it's like, like right. all the is there, that's what oh, I that imagine the one. Simpsons Seinfeld yeah. epi- right. writing rooms were like, like just so much fun. And I, I'd <laughs> say the Simpsons is pretty fun yeah. in, ter- in terms of comedy writing. You know, they're all, they're all fun. It depends what else, you know, if something, if, if like, you know, you, you you had a your pipes burst at your house. Just getting mm-hmm. out of the house and going to the office is fun. So whatever yeah. you're writing that day will seem yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Saturday Night Live, we were really young, so everything every day at SNL was like, wow, this is this mind blowing thing because you just never did it before. Yeah. And you know, your After, idea of fun changes too. Like yeah. uh, when you're in your twenties, like when we were at the Shandling Show, it's like. Oh boy, we're gonna order dinner. We're gonna eat dinner here. Yeah. You know, now you yeah. just you want to go home and mm-hmm. have a drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the sh- the, the Shandling show, what, uh, how was that? We actually watched a few of those today too, and then I've watched the the DVD that you gave me. I've been sort of watching them. Which Justin are you still gonna? You know? No, I showed him. I showed. Him, and here's the funny thing. Uh-huh. So on the DVD, there's a booklet of the Gary Shandling show that, in the, that Tom it, gave you. Okay, yeah, Tom gave me a copy of this book of this DVD. And in the back of the DVD, there's a booklet, and on the back page, there's this photograph of Tom wearing a Gary Shandling costume Mm -hmm. next to Gary Shandling, and then there's a signature uh, that says, uh, thanks, Tom, or something like, or like, like, something, it's to To Tom, Tom, Gary, love Gary, (laughs) right? So Tom gave me this DVD, and I found that, or my friend Mike Chillian was flipping through the booklet, and he saw that, and he showed it to me, and I'm like, oh my god. G- G- Gary signed this book for Tom and, and he just gave it to me and I really look close and I'm like yeah I think that's a real signature so I show it to Tom today and he's like no that's on every that's what? that's, that's, the, that's you- on the photo that's like because they asked him for a photo and he found that that's that's a that's his photo that they scanned oh my god so that signature is on the photo not yeah. on the booklet just literally I'm like it. oh yeah, I wanted to I borrow told it. him today I'm like yeah. I don't know if I should have yeah, it yeah, really yeah, bad yeah, like, yeah. like this is a personal gift and then from I started Gary thinking like what's the story like does Tom hate Gary and he's just like no trust me keep it it's fine <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, why would he give this away? Yeah. Like, I felt and so Justin guilty. Justin said he was going to hermetically see it. Like, I wanted to borrow it. Like, no, I'm keeping him in a glass case. But even, like, if, yeah. even if it was a real scene, it's not like Gary's blood or anything. Like, no, I know, I know. Why would you care? I know. But I think still, just it's just like... You know, working at Letterman, too, where you had like a different cool guest every day, I, 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 I don't know, speaking for myself, I think I just got sort of partied and celebrityed out by the time I was like 25. Sure. It's not... You know, I mean... If Gary was going to come in here and talk to us and be funny, but like an autograph, I've never been much of an autograph. Was there seeker. someone that yeah. you did meet that you were like, it was a big deal where you got nervous or did that, has that you ever guys, happened? You guys, you three. Oh, stop <laughs> it. I thought your palms were sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Who have you met that you were like? Well, like I said, everybody, you know, like the first few years we were doing it, everybody was like, yeah. oh my God, like this guy's famous. And now I just feel like. And uh, meeting Albert cares. Brooks when he was on Letterman, that was pretty exciting. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was great. I mean, everybody. What about well, Woody he Allen? He didn't respond well to the car crash, so we know not, he, nothing. Like if you just said "whoa" when you almost got hit by the truck or whatever, so maybe I should just yeah. ask you what was the big deal. Yeah. I mean, lately I've been getting excited meeting cartoonists, like because uh, I have a comic strip now, and like meeting Mel Lazarus uh, two years ago at the uh, right at the cartoonist convention. That was really was a big exciting. Deal. Who is Mel, yeah. Who's Mel Lazarus? Who's Mel Lazarus? Who's Mel Lazarus? <laughs> he draws How co- dare you? Yeah. He draws a comic strip called Mama and he did one called Miss Peach before that. Uh, see, uh, I, I, I love uh, cart- uh, comic strips in the 80s so if you said you met Burke Breath. I haven't met him, no. Uh, or Gary Larson, obviously. Yeah. Or Bill Watterson. Or the guy who did... Uh, Jeez, listen to you. 
What? what a Those nerd. are come on. Charles that was the golden <laughs> age of com- of new Jim comic Davis. Strip. That's what for my comedy sensibility. Reading right. uh, Blue right. County. Well, wait, I interrupted when you were talking about Woody Allen. Are you, no, said nobody said Woody Allen. No, I, 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 I'm trying to think I, who's inter- like who, who in comedy have you guys not worked with that you're like that would be. But like I bet a, you oh, met meet? him, right? Yeah. What's that? We've you never met Woody Allen. I've never I'm met sure. him. Have you? No, you I'm guys hang out with him all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, although somebody, a friend who works for him, just gave us some cool autographed pictures yeah. of him. Uh, uh, Jane so that you care about? See? Well, <laughs> I, no, because it was nice to see our friend. And I, I know yeah. I always feel bad because it's not. I should get more excited about autographs or something. Yeah. But, but it's cool. Jane right. Martin, who worked at Saturday Night Live with us, uh, she was um, Jane Curtin's uh, assistant. Yeah. Then became Woody Allen's assistant, and um, when we were at Saturday Night Live, we would watch her autograph a Jane Curtin. Photos. So when she, oh. so she said, "Like, hey, Woody, sign this for you." It's uh-huh. like a heated night. She said, I, "I swear on a stack of." She said, "Holy Bibles." Uh-huh. Uh, it was his signature. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, actually, Justin, we can't forget about the Ghostbusters two reference. Oh, so that yeah, Mike Chilling, we keep mentioning. Damn it! I wanted to bring that up back when we were talking about your SNL years. Maybe I can just oh, cut it in. Our proudest strategically. Why? I don't know. So, so no, but. W- in in Ghostbusters two, they have a what is it like a spirit guide? No, or something? they say there's a reference. To, it's the Gamble and Prost infant ac- acuity okay, test. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a where, what are you reading? Where, where are you getting all this stuff? My, they're my notes, but I'm pulling them from different sources. <laughs> yeah, he's sort of. But we, what sources? Where? where uh, you know, you guys have a Wikipedia. Page. Oh, from Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, what, that was cool. There was a scene with uh, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, and they were obviously on the set saying, "We need some names here." So either Bill or Dan said, oh, let's say Gamble and Frost. So yeah. that was pretty exciting. I wish it had been Ghostbusters 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we just thought we had geeky scientist names. Yeah. 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 And, and. <laughs> and, and never did you hear anything, never never a phone call. Hey, by your the way, wife. your name's... When your wife saw it. Oh, yeah. No, actually... So you guys had to go to the theater to, to yeah, discover... Yeah, no, actually, for, Sandy and Mara went to the theater because uh, we were working, and then they called and said, like, yeah, they mentioned your name, but it didn't get much of a response. <laughs> <laughs> As if it were a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The whole crowd goes, <laughs> yeah! yeah! <laughs> yeah! I love this gay Shannon show! Um, yeah. So I have a question real quick about the Gary Shandling show because one thing that we did do too, and I've been doing as well sort of periodically, is listen to the commentary tracks. And there's one where, like, I don't, like what, what, what was that like recording? What, what was your relationship with Gary like? Because he, he seems a little... Uh, like I, I, he's a genius and he's incredible, but he seems a little like angry or we or off. Or, I don't know. Like yeah. like sort on, of the, touchy, on the commentary like, tracks. Or? Yeah, yeah. Like he he. I, I can't. Quite we remember. know what he would do. He, he would come. We'd be, we did these like a year ago, and yeah. I hadn't seen him in a few years. But he would sit in the room with us. We talk, and he'd go, "All right, I'm going to go sit outside. I'm, I'm going to leave so you can talk freely about me without me in the room." And then we just sit like right outside the booth, so he's listening to everything you say. So yeah. It's not like you're going to start saying, "Oh, he was a huge asshole," because he's right there. I mean, so. But there was one episode. It was. A, <laughs> it was an episode called Go Go Goldblum, which it was a disastrous week where we had written a really funny script and Gary came in in a bad mood and, and before the read through said we're not going to do this well, episode. And then uh, I don't think they did that commentary, but Max and I were watching the commentary and reliving all that. And afterwards, the lady came out and said, like, we're not using that commentary. Because <laughs> wow. well, well, you guys were kind of being honest about how. how yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> like it was like before even the read through, Gary went over to Jeff Goldblum, who had memorized the script and was hilarious. He'd been doing it and saying. We're not going to do this script, uh, but trust me, I've got some ideas. And then they rewrote it that week, and it was it was a pretty lame episode. Well, we, oh, we hadn't really? thought about the episode. I mean, I, I actually didn't say very much. You were the one getting very bitter. Like <laughs> as Tom was watching the episode, you know, we saw. Oh, I remember this show. This is good. And as we were watching, it, you go. Oh yeah, Gary didn't read that line right, and you just started criticizing. Like, oh, that could have been so funny if Gary had just, <laughs> he just read the thing like he was supposed to. I mean, you were absolutely oh, right, but like, I think you know, it just became this negative slew of like, you know, instead of like fun, happy, fun memories of yeah. the episode, it all just became like, oh, th- this is why the scene sucks. Yeah. Oh, this was on the, in the script. This part was great. And yeah. it just you know, became- it's really funny. Actually, there's a taste of that between the two of you in the. Um, the Gary Gary the, the theme park episode oh, but it's called it's, but, yeah. but it's not called that it's called like Mr. Sparks Mr. or something yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but like there's a moment where you say like uh, the, the old man they ca- they should have got a bigger celebrity because uh, you know it should have been more Gary's caliber at, to Gary's level the guy was a, and then you're, you sort of interrupt him and go no he, he did fine he did a fine job I don't think that came off well it wasn't that yeah. sharp but like it was essentially that kind of th- that sort of yeah. a moment but, Tom yeah. I don't know what you're talking about Justin's doing a great job with <laughs> yeah. this podcast. no it's funny uh, Justin you are the one person in the planet probably who's l- not only watched the channeling tapes but like has listened to the DVD commentary I don't oh, think yeah. anyone <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. that show comedy 
Comedy fans have to. That's yeah, no, so, right? It's funny how it's people are getting into that again now because, like, you know, it seemed like for a long time we would tell people we worked for Gary Shandling. They go, oh, Larry Sanders? No, no, the earlier show. <laughs> huh? What earlier show? No, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and now people yeah. are kind of appreciating. Well, it's so it's, ground. I mean, it's crazy. It's it's like we're watching it today. because like, I'd watch it when I was a kid and I hadn't mm-hmm. really watched it since. I was like. This is so he's it's so weird, it's so different. Like, yeah, it's I mean, so bizarre. It's so, like so casual and yeah. like like just presentational, but then there's a story going on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it must I have mean, been they, how, like we actually we we were kind of trying to get a broad view so we skipped forward to that we want to see what the Gary Shandling land look like. How did that <laughs> how do they how do they justify in the universe of the show that there's a Gary Shandling world? Like well, that was a controversial. <laughs> that, was our, that was our idea. I think yeah. that was No, no, yeah, cuz remember Ellen's White Bell's uh, father-in-law had died so he was mm-hmm. gone that week. Mm-hmm. So they said, "Oh, he'll just do Shandling land." And um and but then they they were editing it. Remember we had to chop out entire <laughs> scenes like we had a whole running thing where Nancy was doing bootleg videos. Yeah, you and, mentioned that. Yeah, 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 and then at the end, she was like, they were saying, we can't do that. That's a criminal act. So then, so I think the episode was like 17 minutes, but then <laughs> the real fake out was there was a song in, in Sailing Land. Uh, Nancy's Dreamland. Nancy's yeah. Dreamland that won an Ace Award. And so, like, we were, we had won an Ace Award that year. And for Just that, the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah for that song. song yeah. yeah, and in fact, we got to go to the BMI Awards. Because yeah. this is one of the things I found because of this flood, our, yeah, yeah. our BMI Award. And uh, talk about being impressed. Like, I remember sitting next to Dozier Lamont, Dozier, like the, the Motown writers who wrote, like, every Motown song. Yeah. They were at the next table. So we, we were, like, with real, like, f- famous songwriters and rock stars and won this crazy award. You think, beat them? We beat them. We beat, we beat, um, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember who the Wasn't other nominees Willie were. Willie Nelson? Willie Nelson. That's maybe. Yeah. Oh, See, that God. that impressed me because, like, wow, we really don't belong in this room. This is Did really they kind of give you, you looks? Like, <laughs> I, I think it was a mistake. I think people, I think voters thought, we wrote the Shandling theme. Like, they saw Gary yeah. Shandling's name in music, and they th- assumed it was the theme song to the show, which uh, I yeah. knew. And this was this crazy song that the that the woman, the fake... Ne- in the in amusement the, yeah, park. The fake, an yeah. idealized version of her or something. Right, yeah. right. And Played she by sings, uh, Christian DeCastro, very talented actress. Yeah, who, who yeah. sang about, like, what can I do for Gary today? It was like this crazy <laughs> yeah. song that we probably wrote in 10 minutes. And and like one this you know it became like oh an award winning song so that was oh, kind of cool but but definitely my favorite episode of Shandling was a musical the one called uh, Tell Me What's Happening to mm-hmm. Me it's about Grant reaching pu- puberty and that that I thought really held up watching it again for the DVDs yeah I, I mean I don't know how you felt were you watching these for the first time Justin or do you, could, do you don't remember them no, well, here's first what's time. weird about that show so when I was a kid I watched it on Fox. And right, Fox right. only aired a very small portion and, and edited versions of yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of the original shows. So the the box set has I mean, I only saw a fraction of what is all in there. So yeah, some of them I am watching for the first time, yeah. Well that show but, changed our life and then it, it actually got us to move to LA. I mean we yeah. came out here to work work. Thanks there. to Ellen's White Bell who we knew at Saturday Night Live. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And then had some great writers on it. It had uh, Ed Solomon. Yeah, who oh, wrote Bill, who wrote Bill and Black? Ted? Yeah, and Men in Black. Ed, Ed yeah. Sullivan left. When we started Tickets Place because he had written um, Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure. Yeah, and so he was leaving because they were making that. And yeah, yeah, and I would have to say that I think that show more than anything had like the roots of the Simpsons writing in it. Totally, Cause it was, yeah. Because yeah. Sam Simon, Mike Reese, and Al Jean, a lot of the guys who cr- kind of created the first few years of the Simpsons, it all a lot of it just came from you know channeling kind of stuff and thinking, wow, if we could just get him to just read the script as written and then yeah. there's you know, some first drafts like like Reese and Gene wrote uh, that Gary threw out that ended up on The Simpsons just like really hilarious stuff just read yeah, too yeah, old yeah, to yeah, be yeah. Simpsons stories yeah 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 oh, but wow. just just wow. kind of attitude stuff that we, that we, wow. we used to really like to write Gary you know as a lunatic that was way too cartoony for him and he would just go guys I don't want you know no I don't want the lamp to go up my ass and that kind of stuff yeah. and stuff that, that for Homer Simpson became perfect you yeah know? and and so when they started writing the Simpsons it, oh, oh no one's stopping us you know Homer isn't telling us not to do this so we can just <laughs> and, write whatever we yeah, want but yeah, yeah at the time working Shandling was considered like really hip and cool and then yeah. there was this guy named Jeff Franklin who had just gotten a pilot and he was leaving and was like Jeff why are you leaving oh my gosh you know, why are you leaving to do this crappy kid show? And it was Full House, and he ended up making <laughs> oh my god millions and millions. And we helped him with the pilot. Yeah, we, we helped with the, the pilot. Full House. Yeah, yeah really? really. That's one of our. But other, he uh, said, like, it, well, I remember. He's like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing a kid show. I was like, why? No, no, they're all crap. And then uh, he wait, did up. he know when he wrote Full House? Like, I'm kind of. I mean, going from Gary Shandling show to Full House. Like, well, no, he was he was like a, a traditional sitcom guy. I think he'd worked at like Mork and yeah. Indy or one of those okay. kind of things. You know, like, and but, actually, Full House. I think uh, you have to ask Jeff Franklin, but it was originally called like Three Comics and it was going to be about uh, three comics living together. Ah, in the house. Right. And then he did it through Miller Boyette 
And that, that's we worried about that. Like, oh, it's going to just become a crappy kid show. But then they put in the Olsen twins and stuff. And yeah, you know, that so was cute. it. I mean, you know, yeah. they knew. They just saw those two. They they they, they saw the fetuses inside <laughs> the woman's stomach. And they're like, yeah, ah, yeah. these. Yeah. Now, are you guys young enough to born. like remember when that was? In, like, were you kids? Oh, when I watched that was Full House. Yeah. Wow. See, because we were already adults, and I just thought. I guess you know today it would be a Nickelodeon show. Or sure. Something. That was yeah. the, that was the days where like prime net, time network ABC. TV, primetime ABC. Yeah, that's a different. And the thing ran for like a dozen years and made the guy a gazillion. Dollars. Yeah. 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 No, my, my dad uh, had, owns a comedy club. He's had it for like 30 years. So I remember he was like, Two of my comics, Bob Sack and Dave Cook, and me in the studio. I remember really like, watching it. I was like 12 and knowing it was lamb. I was just like, oh, No dad. way. That's because you're no, a boy. No, I hated it too. Girls love it. I hated you're it too. Boy. You guys watch Family Matters, though, right? No, I, I hated them no, all. I they were still, all I watched all that TGI. Cool. I watched no, them, no, no, but no, they no, were no, horrible. They hypnotized us, Jackie. That. Yeah. Begrudgingly, I hated it. It was the only thing that was on. Listen, we knew what Tom and Max were working on was better, but somehow you get hypnotized. But the uh, TGIF, like you're alone. Yeah, you're 14, I was you're waiting loser, for the dinosaur like, show. Yeah, I guess if you're a kid. <sighs> yeah, see, because we were already adults. So that's why we, I never aspired to write that kind of stuff. That's why we thought, you know, I'm not really a sitcom writer. We all came from late night. So because when we were adults, that was the level of sitcom stuff was like yeah. Family Matters kind of stuff. And, yeah. And even those kind of Norman Lear shows that were still existed into the 80s. Yeah, I remember moving out and working on Shandling and everyone was talking about Laverne and Shirley like, a really classy show. It's like, oh, he's really good. He worked on Laverne and Julie. Like, really? That's a good thing. <laughs> but, I mean, you guys d- end up working on all these shows that, yeah, these almost anti-sitcoms. Like, kind of every – did you ever work on anything that was, like, kind of in that range of, like, wow. No, that, that's what was so weird when Seinfeld was, like, the number one show in America. Because people are like, yeah. oh, you're accomplished sitcom writers. And I think if you ask the staff of – Seinfeld, they would have said, no, we don't really, that's not what, where we're from. Yeah. Yeah. It just happened to become very popular. You know? yeah. Fred Stoller. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Fred Stoller. <laughs> you guys were there when he was there, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wait, no, he was a staff writer? He, he was a yeah. staff writer He was for around you. for a while, yeah. Oh, he, really? he wrote one episode. I think. You were very funny episode. You wouldn't call Fred Stoller a mainstream writer. Yeah. You know, no. Yeah. Just like, yeah, it was all kind of oddballs. And, yeah. and uh, But that's great. I mean, so, you know, occasionally there's like the right confluence and the thing actually becomes popular. Yeah. Um, but but that's what's cool. You guys seem to have been involved in all these shows that were like that. Like I mean, that's well, that's some awesome. of them. Yeah. <laughs> so so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the is the it, getting back to we sort of brushed on it uh, uh, for a second is the comic strip stuff. Oh yeah. So, so you so. You do you do the doozies a comic called the doozies and it's on, it's on what is that website it's on it's, it's on, like gocomics.com dot okay, gocomics.com dot com and you can find the doozies <laughs> and like one of the things that he and I I I've been showing my friends the learn to draws and my favorite one is number ten with the uh, I don't want to blow the joke oh, yeah, for yeah, yeah. anyone that sees it but if you go online and you search learn to dr- learn to draw yeah, yeah search uh, Tom Gamble yeah Tom, <laughs> Tom Gamble, Gamble lesson ten yeah, yeah learn to draw and it's uh, yeah. it's he'll teach he show he'll give you an inside uh, tr- inside view on on how he creates some of his characters <laughs> for a strip and it's really funny yeah, I, yeah. and Max uh, Max sh- uh, shoots them and what's nice is because you know for thirty years we've been like writing scripts that don't get made and then they're in a big pile. But like this, we just sort of shoot it, and then we can yeah. put it on YouTube, and it's. Uh, and so, what I wanted to ask you is like, how do you, how are you guys getting in with all these like other like su- Sunday morning comic guys, like the the guy that that that, that, that I forget his name already, the one that you said earlier that we were chastising no, him for not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's my pal now. I mean, he's our, our friend, and, and he's guys, great. He's you, like he's he's in his eighties, and we could call him up and say, Mel, we have an idea. Can we shoot this? He says, "Sure, come on over." Really? Yeah, he's really funny. I mean, Mel is as funny as anyone. He, he's the guy met. that with the giant. You bring the giant yeah. strip mm-hmm. to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, okay. it's also, so you know, we're, we're old enough now that you know, if we still want to be like the young hip guys, we have to hang around with ninety-year-old. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> what other? What other? What other guys in that world? I know that. Well, we just shot something uh, two weekends ago with uh, Jeannie Schultz, the widow of Charles Schultz. Wow. Uh, Tom is, yeah. Tom's courting her. Yeah. <laughs> like Yosemite <laughs> Sam style. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, and Kathy Guys, who drew Kathy. She's wow. Like, and so you, how are you getting in with all these people? This well, is, it's insane. Uh, le- last year and this year, I am the uh, host for the uh, annual uh, awards banquet they do. Okay. This oh, year, for the comic strips? Like yeah, yeah. It's, the it's, a, it's the National Cartoon Society. It's called the Rubin Awards, named after Rube Goldberg. Oh. And uh, last year they were in uh, New Jersey, and this year they're in Boston. And it's going to be a great show. So we've been shooting a bunch of videos. We did one with Patrick McDonald and his wife, uh, Karen. He draws mutts. Yeah. And we're going to do the, and this one with Jeannie Schultz. And uh, we got one with Arnold Roth, who's this awesome uh, magazine cartoonist. So, uh, yeah, so, we, I mean, it's not that big a world, so. Yeah. Do you know Wiley? Uh, I have not met him, no. <laughs> or, or the guy who does Bafo? 
What's his name? Yes, uh, Joe Martin. Maybe? He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about what about Jim Davis? Is he? I met I met Jim Davis in Ohio. Like? Uh, really nice guy. Just, you know, he's he, like I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate Mondays. You know, he he had a funny story. I met him in Ohio, and he said that um, they approached him to do an animated Garfield show in the mid eighties. Yeah, he, he said I will only do it if we can get Jim Brooks, who of course went on to do um, uh, uh, the Simpsons. Yeah. And he said that CBS said, oh, no, Jim Brooks wouldn't be right for a cartoon show. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he did boy. it anyways, obviously. He did the, Gar- the Garfield I show. I guess so, yeah. yeah. And, and he, he had uh, L- L- Lorenzo oh, simple. music. No, Lorenzo, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, Lorenzo, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah Carlton, Carlton hey. the Doorman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Wait, what, Lorenzo what, music. What, what is the award show? Like? What are the different awards for the for the Rubens? Well, there's, of course, uh, <laughs> best <laughs> comic strip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what are, like, the below awards? What are you built yeah. up to? Best uh, character <laughs> design. Best yeah. word bubbles. No. <laughs> they, they give animation awards. Seth, yeah. Seth won one last oh, year. Oh, okay. So it sort of encompasses... Yeah, illustrator magazine guard. illustration. Yeah. Oh, okay, you know. gotcha. It, it can be a long night. But best this, single panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because a lot of the presenters are previous winners, so they can be really old. Uh, Last year they had um, uh, Jerry Robinson there. Uh, who's, who's that? Wait, wait. Yeah. Jerry Robinson created uh, the Joker, and he's a comic. Oh, book wow. Guy. Okay. So oh, he, he actually the Joker from Batman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. So okay. he he had a walker, and the music they had was na 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 na. And now like, and now please welcome Jerry Robinson. Na 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 na. He saw the clock going around. <laughs> oh my and he god. Got up there. You, just, you just reminded me. Did you read in the L.A. Times today? There's a big article about cigar. No, really? The, Popeye was created in my neighborhood. I didn't realize that. It's like a Santa Monica creation. Oh, wow. It was based on this. Everyone thought it was this old guy on the pier. The Seager and his family lived on 17th in Montana. And, wow. and, and the character was created on Broadway and 4th Street. Oh, cool. And it's actually a bartender he knew back home in Illinois. But it was, it, everyone, it, it's that that guy's characteristics with this old sea captain who used to hang around the Santa Monica pier that hmm. he knew. Is he still around? The, the original, no, the original no, sailor. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not only is the original inspiration for Popeye, and now he's like, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, kids, anybody got any spinach <laughs> so I can get out, get up, and move over? <laughs> it just helps me walk. Yeah. No. Wait, so when we were working for Center Night Live, were you guys even born yet? No, yeah, I was born yes. in eighty. I'm born in seventy. Oh my god, Febu- February yeah. February twenty first, nineteen eighty. So wow. you guys were gone already. You guys had already left uh, we, SNL yeah. at that point. No, right? no, we were still we there, were there we for still, the first. Yeah. So, but we were writing material for the show. And We've been in the born. business. Yeah. I wasn't even in Earth. Born. I wasn't Wait, even on this planet. What years did you write again? Seventy nine was like our first professional career. So if you see, so it's what's really creepy is this is our fifth decade writing professionally. Seventies, eighties, nineties, not. And we've still got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't talk about are you working on the simpsons right now or what are you working on yeah, yeah, we're still there. So, oh, so but it's very simpsons. don't you like just go on thursdays yeah yeah we go we go on like the heavy rewrite tomorrow we're going to be on the lot because there's a napoleon read through and everyone's excited because joan rivers is going to be there doing a record so people want to see it for the simpsons for the simpsons oh, it's a wow. huge part too i hope she can do it i think people are well bored. she's great i just watched your documentary she's she's still uh yeah, she's, she's still, still going, going. Well, she told funny. she told everybody you know I, I, i'm leaving 11 15 you have me for one hour and i know from that movie her date book yeah 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 she's obsessed she's got She's got plenty of time. Yeah, wow. But it's a it's a big part. Yeah, that, um, Tress McNeil read at the at the read through. Uh-huh. She was great. Oh, God, and, Tress uh, McNeil's amazing. Oh my God, yeah, she was. I'm so a huge funny. fan of hers. Yeah. Well, you know it's cool. We're working on this Napoleon Dynamite animated show that uh, it's got the original director writers. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And hey, do you guys Michelle, know Tara Strong? She's going to be on Napoleon. She's yeah, yeah, the she's one of those Tress types that you know. Yeah. Yeah. On she must have done on a billion shows. And, yeah, you know, so she's like our utility person at that show. Yeah, or Frank Welker, or all these. Oh, things. Frank yeah. Welker, they haven't called yet, but I'm sure he'll be yeah. brought and do something. Um, Maurice Lamarche is the yes. other guy that does a lot of. Oh, that guy! Oh, but Phil Hendry's gonna be there tomorrow. Oh, Phil Hendry, what? Uh-oh. Why? What, what's he doing? Oh. He's he's doing some voices on for, the, for Napoleon. Napoleon. Oh yeah. my God! I see. He's a guy that I want to work with. Really, really bad. Like, like if if I can get a show on the air, that's the first call I'm going to make for voices. Yeah, he changes. Look, he's going with this like Ben Franklin haircut now. That <laughs> oh, it's, really? It's so not his personality. But it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that guy, that guy's a, gotta mix it he, up. Oh my god, I'm jealous. You guys are going to get to hang out with him. So is yeah, he like he, regular on the show? He was on it last week, and he did a character a guidance counselor that just sounded like uh, Bobby Dooley. Bobby Dooley. It was hilarious. Oh my god, yeah. man, that Justin, is amazing. Justin, you guys wanna, are lucky. Do you want to ask about the? Uh, maybe we'll get him on the podcast. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Justin, you want to ask about that, that Simpsons story you were wondering about earlier with Marge's hair? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll cut this if it's, if it's, if it's, <laughs> if it's, if it's like, if, it, if you guys can't talk about it or you don't know about it. So I heard a story from somebody, my friend Alex, I think, I can't remember who told me, but that um, the first time they ever wanted to show Marge drop her hair down um, out of the traditional sort of beehive, beehive that she has, uh, that Matt Groening wanted her to have bunny ears and that they were like, the writing room was like, no, what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I want her to have bunny ears. And like, I guess it was a huge battle and that he ultimately lost, but it was like this big thing. Is that, tr- do you know anything? I, I've heard it? that story. I don't know if it's true. I mean, and it, it might be true, but it, it would have been from like the first month when they were writing the show where it, ah. he, it was still like, maybe it was going to be like life in hell. You know? Okay. So it's okay. Not, yeah. so it's, it's not like, that far fetched. The, the story like been... season seven. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I okay. Just, yeah. Yeah, wow. so but so. you know it's funny. I I interviewed Matt in Ohio um, in October. There was a big cartoon uh, conference then, and so to, to prep, I was reading a lot of Life and Hell's because you know he was doing that for ten years before yep. the Simpsons, and it's really cool reading those because it's clearly you can see like the pilot of the Simpsons forming. I mean, so many iconic Simpson things yeah. came out of those uh, Life and Hell panels. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean that that comic is incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. I actually just a few years ago. Because I had them all as a kid, and I don't know where they are. So I went and I rebought all the ones that are still in print, and uh, I reread through them all. There's one comic that somebody has up on their. I don't know if it was ever printed in any of the books, but it was like something. Of, I can't even remember what it was, so forget it. Never mind. Something about like <laughs> a a being a writer. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, like looking at the looking at the life and hell. You know, years before The Simpsons, you see real like Marge kind of attitudes and really real Mr. Burns things and, yeah, yeah. and Apu kind of stuff. So it's, Matt Groening, because we were talking about this, like this the idea of like who defined. Because we I was saying how I heard the commentary in Futurama, how Matt Groening, as I said to Justin, I'm like he's on every episode, and Justin's surprised. I'm like I, I think Futurama was sort of like of like a passion project, and then we started talking about how maybe that he. The Simpsons was sort of taken away from him in a little bit of ways, and so Futurama was sort of more his own. Is that is there any truth? To well, that? The, the Futurama is kind of the Simpsons without J- James L. Brooks and Gracie because uh-huh. they had nothing to do with Futurama. Yeah. So, it's, so it's a little a little more brain, a little less heart. You yeah, know, I guess that would be yeah. how you put yeah, 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 yeah. it. And uh, and it had a really hard time with Fox. Fox really mistreated Matt with it because he, yeah. he and David Cohen worked really hard on it, and you know it certainly had its fans. And they you know just kept kind of jerking them around. They they it took them like you know. 10 years to make the you know first few seasons of episodes and they would order them and not show them and, and then you know, cancel them football, it and, yeah yeah and much like family guy it took you know like cartoon network and comedy central sort of revived it by you know it got fox let the other networks develop it as a hit and then they sort of brought it back and yeah. it's still but it's still not on the network you know 20th makes it for comedy central yep. yeah and they you know people do kind of questions you why don't they just put it on yeah. sunday yeah. night there are enough people who like it fox so. is weird it's both creates the most groundbreaking stuff but then they're also i don't understand that this weird paradox because they do put out a lot of great risky mm-hmm. stuff but then they also totally mistreat stuff well, i know though. i mean it would be great if they opened another night of animation i mean everyone's been hoping for that but yeah. they haven't done that yet yeah but yeah. you know it's kind of depressing if you if you want to break into the exciting world of um of tv writing you know, when I heard Futurama was coming back, I knew a lot of really funny uh, writers looking for work. I was thinking, oh, write a spec script. That'll be great. But when it came back, all the original writers from Futurama were yeah, came available. Back. And so also came yeah. back a called down staff, like not even like, almost like a skeleton. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Were you guys involved in the inception of Futurama or the early we, season? Yeah, we, we, we worked on the first 13 episodes. But again, you know, not we weren't there full time. We were just, uh, we were working at Fox and, and we knew those guys. So listen, uh th- Thank you guys for yeah, coming. Yeah. That was a very awkward yeah, transition. But. Oh, are we boring you? <laughs> no, no. I, feel, I, could, I feel like I could keep talking for hours. Yeah, no, this more, has been, more of your this stories. Been, yeah. so great. You guys have to come back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the reality Anytime. is we, we, we barely scratched the surface. We sort of just kind of bounced around. There's tons more we could talk to you about. the biggest deal that we've had on, on this show. I think so, yeah. I, are you kidding? What? No, you had, you had Sarah you. Silverman. That's the one that I yeah, listened to. I but, that was, yeah, but I don't know. That she, she was very funny what talking I'm about realizing, her vagina lips. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah which she yeah. told on Stern and she told recently and she told a story in our podcast like first. four yeah. months yeah. earlier. We got it first. Right. We had the exclusive. But, uh, but no, I think anyone who's fans of comedy, I mean, because I knew you guys were just from seeing your names and everything when Justin mentioned that you were working with them Fox. It's like, oh my God, those guys are awesome because you guys have written on every great show. A lot of people know who you are when I tell them. Yeah. I didn't know who you were. So I'm just naive. I mean, who else has written for Seinfeld, you. Simpsons, SNL, Letterman, Gary Shandling? Yeah, and I wor- and just so everyone knows, I worked with him on a failed Fox show. 
I, I pitched and sold the show, and then then they wrote it with me, and it was a pleasure. These and the guys that you would go yes, and have lunch with yes, at Moe's yes, and all the stuff, yes. and, and leave was, me with all the work to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was really frustrating because uh, Justin has like these great designs for characters, and these great characters would be perfect on mm-hmm. the Fox. Mike yeah. my Chilean and I. No, we get sent lots of crap. I mean, like because it came from I forget if we got her, saw it from Paradigm or Fox and. Oh, here's a guy. We, you should see his work. And we saw the stuff and thought, oh, this is great. This, if anyone's going to be like the next Matt or Seth MacFarlane, it should be this guy. I hear that. And, Aww. It's a vote of confidence. <laughs> hear that, audience? Thank you. It means a lot, seriously. <laughs> nice. I, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm fighting. I'm fighting my way well, up. We, we so got trying to get my trying to get my piece of this pie. <laughs> but you got go oh, to you gotta go back to Fox and say, look, Gamma for us, fuck this up. Give me another chance. <laughs> no, I could really, never say that. No, you, guys did, you guys made it. I'll say it, Justin. No, I mean, yeah. honestly, like you, w- with your involvement, I think it was exponentially better. You know, it was, that script is still so good. I love that script. Yeah, uh, so we'll see. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for being yeah, on the show. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Check thank out guys. Go yeah, Comics, yeah. Learn to Draw. Yeah, and Napoleon uh, Dynamite. Uh, uh, the doozies on Go Comics. Napoleon Dynamite's airing it's at the end in of the year. It's in a year. In like one year it, from now. So January. Yeah. Nine Mark your calendars. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I think it's premiering the same week like if Bob's Burgers did right. this week. Because Bob's Burgers premiered and it didn't get very good ratings. And I think one of the one of the network people accidentally told uh, – Mike Scully, like, oh, yeah, we, we did that show a, a bad service by premiering it, you know, like January 15th. It's a terrible week to premiere stuff. So when are we premiering? Uh, January 17th, <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the premiere so, date. That's, yeah. 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 Good, good. Um, all right. So uh, I, I like to eat turds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's that time in the show for our resident celebrity gossip columnist, Mr. Seymour Scoops, with some celebrity scoops. Hey, everybody. All right. Seymour Scoops here. If you've got a scoop, I've already scooped you. Yeah, you're back. back Back. up. Been here for been I'd here for a little while. Myself. Look at my ears. Have you reacclimated back to life in the Los some... Angeles area? Yeah. Uh, if you mean gotten used to the smell? Maybe never. Oh, Mr. Nice. Scoops, That's is a I good joke. Yeah, no, he's 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 got it. He's got it back. Scoops he's got it back. Got it. Yeah. So let's just get Watch right into out, it. Watch out, TMZ bullpen. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Let's yeah. let's just scoops. Do you have a bullpen? I wish I had a bullpen. Cause it's just Mr. Scoops in town. Oh wow, that 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 that's so you it, had. You can put music. That's the new that slogan. I bet. So you have that at your uh, disposal when everyone I asks get, you about your. You know employees. what? You're my bullpen. Uh, because oh, you know what, Mr. Scoops, that's well, so sweet of you. Yeah, I don't know if that was a compliment. I get news. Oh, yeah. I get results and I get um, feedback from my two best buddies. Yeah, right. exactly. Like, like we're his bullpen, just like you know, uh, you're my wall to lean on or whatever. Uh, hey, you're my rock. Guess what, bullpen? <laughs> Mark Ruffalo was spotted at a yo play stand two weeks ago. Who would have thunk that Mark's going for the yo-yos? Yeah! Hey, oh, my God. Great scoop there. That is... Great, wonderful... Oh, my Academy God. Academy Award. That, uh, there you go. That, Woo! What who, a, who else Right out of the that? gate. No one. What other great scoops so do you have Mark for Ruffalo yep. was at a yo... Academy a, Award. Wait, did you say yo play? Yo play stand. Yo, do they have stands? Ooh, betch, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do. They have stands. Yep. I've seen them. Really? You have? Yeah. Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. You know, where, like, like malls. Where have you seen them? Universal City Walk. Really? Just yeah. like Yo Play Yogurts. Yep. Universal. Yeah. Home yeah. of the shop. Uh, and they That's just right. have a cooler full of their yogurt. In fact, yeah. in fact me and in Mr. Fact. Scoops ate at one really? last yeah. week. What or kind of yogurt? During the week. What kind yeah. of yogurt Wednesday, did you have? I believe. What uh, kind of yogurt? What flavor? Just uh, strawberry. But you know what? I don't know the flavor, but I don't know who was there. Tony Danza. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Really? With his young daughter. Sorry. 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 That's right. Sounds a lot like. You win. Now, are you sure you weren't thinking of Tom Cruise's daughter? Good friends. That's how they got the name. Uh-huh. Awesome. So, what oh, yeah. else? So, Mr. Right. Scoops, let's. Well, yeah, what other great scoops do you have? I mean, this is an exciting right. week. Uh, well, well, you know, what other Justin, scoops? Not, let's, let's drop the great. It's funny. Uh, today, this week, uh, lots of animation. Celebrities oh, in the news. You know, you like I like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Justin, all right. Right Justin, up my alley. Justin's an animation you, celebrity. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is right up my alley. Frank Oz, Ooh. legendary puppeteer, yeah. was found with a yo play yogurt on the streets. <laughs> Another yo play story. Yes. <laughs> Now, Mr. Scoop, that's that. amazing. Are you sure you couldn't just read I your own believe. writing and 
I can't believe it. Just I can't believe I, that Frank Oz was at the same I know. <laughs> place you where know, we were. It must be a popular Yo Play are stand. Being, are you being paid by Yo Play? Oh, no, I'm such a huge fan. No, I wish we had gone that same day he was there, Mr. Can, Scoops. Can you, by the way, change uh, my name to Mr. Yo Play <laughs> Scoops? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course. All righty. Wait, wait a minute. If, I mean, it, I mean yeah. Mr. Scoops. No, Mr. Mr. Scoops. Yo play scoops yeah. to you. Mr. Mr. Yo played scoops. I'd like to say uh, uh, you uh, you've earned Yo it. You've I, earned the I'm ability not, to, to because change. Because you've earned the money that Yo played. No you. way. I just love it. Hey, listen, I brought this freezer. You guys want some Yo Play? Yeah. Oh, my Come God. Come on. Whoa. He's got hey, a whole there. freezer full of you. Here you oh, go. Oh, my God. Give me some of that. Come oh on, Ryan. Delicious. Down oh. this stuff. Here you go, mm. Chuck. He's oh on my the- god! Oh, well, yeah. this is the weird thing is that vanilla. It's, um. it's not. It's it's fro. It's not it's frozen. frozen yogurt, but it's it's just regular Yoplait yogurt, frozen rock salad. It's totally. Mm. Yeah, rock. but it's so yeah. good. You sort of pee. You sort of take the <laughs> spoon and just dig it. into it. That's not how you eat yogurt. Mm. Yes, mm. I love Beautiful. it this way. That's- eat up, boys. There's more where that came from. So, uh, Mr. Can, Scoops- I, can I just? I just want to point out one thing. You said that uh, this is an animation story, and then you you betcha, Fra- Frank. It, Muppets are not animated. Hey, oh, hey, hey, easy, easy. Hey take there. it easy. What do you mean easy? Well, easy. I'm just saying it, it, it doesn't take away from the great scoop he just laid down. Well, well, Mr. You, Scoops, what you else were, do you got for us? If you were around Mae West, you'd say those are too big to be boobs. That's right. You, yeah. So there. Oh, you're saying that's the kind of person I am? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's right in front of your face. Uh-huh. All uh, right. I don't see the, I don't see the force Henson. for the trees. Okay. So hey, what else do you got, Mr. Scoop? Further news. Yeah. Famous uh, video game uh, guy, Bill Watterson, was spotted eating a cheese ball right near a Yo Play stand on La Cienega. Oh, my Cienega. God. Gee, oh. Mr. He is Scoop. such a recluse. Like, yeah. He, he was in L.A., like, eating a, a cheese ball? That's incredible. No, but oh, he replicated God. his house and had it moved. So Whoa! Bill Watterson, the, the yeah. creator. Was there a Bill, was there a Calvin Whoa. and Hobbes video game I wasn't aware of? Is that what you said, video game guy? Yes. Well, you know, he's he was bored with a cartoon and moved to video. Uh, yeah, that's, Scoops, I, that's what I heard I too. Mean, yeah. yeah, I, I heard don't that mean too. To be rude, but are all I mean, are all your you scoops, are. <laughs> are all your scoops essentially about people? Being seen eating things from now on? No or? way. No. no way. I've Do you got have more anything. Scoops. Hey, listen. Th- 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 uh, if that's what happened, then that's what the scoops are going to be. I mean, the last time I did watch you, TMZ, you imply said, you imply that he's making these things listen up. Listen here, I've got more with that. Case. Yeah, yeah. What okay. else do you have, Mister Charles Scoop? Schultz, the legendary cartoonist of Peanuts? Yeah. yeah, was found at a pop fruit yo play. Pop <laughs> fruit. It's got all the icings, but none of the fruit. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what, this is a different kind of Yo Play stand? It's not the normal Yo yeah. Play stand. It's, That's why it's a real you know, scoop. It's okay. funny. Like, I I, so, uh, I love the peanut. I love the yeah. comic strip, the peanut. Yeah, it's Peppermint a shame that Yo Charles, Play Patty. So any, Charles any, passed any, away about any, 10 years ago. Any, any story that about that, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm all ears. Chuck, so. was, he was, moves around. Yeah. His reanimated corpse? Or, yes. Yeah. Hey. Charles Schultz, the reanimator. <laughs> Peanuts, peanuts, well, wait a minute. peanuts. <laughs> the reanimator was the one who reanimated the corpses. Right. So, mis- well, yes. Okay. okay, well, what else do you have, Mr. Well, Scoops? Let it sounds me like tell you. you're on a roll today as far as I'm concerned. I mean, these are some of the best scoops I know. I've ever heard. Tell me about it. James Blunt. Yeah. You've Ooh. heard him. He's yeah, alive. He had a bad it's day. It's a good start. He's had a, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. Not a bad day. Yeah. had a great day because yeah. he went to Yo Play on La Sepulveda Canyon Road Ooh. and Harper Avenue. That's the new That's, that's the, new the one. newest Yo Play yeah, stand. Yeah, they just put Come that one up. Come get your Yo Play. You won't be disappointed today. Uh, the Trix flavored Yo Play they serve at that particular oh. location is delicious. He had a Yo May. He had a Yo Play. <laughs> Yum yum hey! Is that did he did he is that is that a commercial jingle that no he recorded? No way! No, that's just a little thing that came out of him when he ate. That is gold. That's money in the bank, right Mr. there. Mr. Scoops, do you have any oh, scoops boy. that don't involve yo play or just general eating? Uh, Lindsay Lohan stole a necklace. But who cares? No, that sounds actually pretty good. On her way down uh. to the jail station, she uh. stopped at a fruit cross. Blueberry House oh, Yo Play stand. Yes. Yes, indeed. Amazing. Those are that. Those are the ones. That, those, those are sort of off uh, the beaten path. Those move around like yeah, those yeah, yeah. Korean trucks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Those are hard to find. So she lucked out. Yeah. And you know what? 
she talked to none other than James Franco uh-huh. over a swirly banana yo play stain. A stain? Yeah. They love to grow the stains. You grow the That's... stains at the yo play stand and then eat them. Uh-huh. It's funny how how the yo play uh, the polio. stands are sort of branching out to these other sort of things. That I, it's really neat. It's sort of a one stop shop for it's, it's delicious for treats. Thing. Growing thing, you know, Vaccinations. hobbies. Can you pull? Can you pull up something on the internet? Just like a, maybe a picture of one of these stands or something. I'm just Listen, I've never seen I, how I, That's very rude. Time, we're right, yeah, we're right, right in the middle we of a. We might Mr. be ending the show here, yeah. Ryan. We might yeah. have to do right that right in the later. middle of a Mr. Scoops interview. You want me to get on the internet? I just wasn't yeah. ignore our guest. Well, I just wasn't rude. aware that Bio played so many stands. Well, now you on. are. Now you are aware of it. Why are you uh, being so, uh, you know, what's the problem a, here? He's got some problems. You know, has he not at this point? You know, earned a little bit of respect from you? No. Respect, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Scoops, I want to say yes. this was an incredible uh, uh, well, segment. Thank you, Justin. And it's right up your alley. Yeah. I love Yo Plates. Animation um, Yo Play. Yogurts. And I just loved every scoop you had for us today. And I. And I wouldn't be one bit surprised if we tomorrow morning wake up and Yo grab play. the morning newspaper and Is boom, it, yeah. all these are going to be in there. Because Yo Play wins a million dollars. These are dollars. fucking scooped. Yeah. First time you heard him. Just, hey. just, just an article about all the celebrities are eating at all the various Yo Play stands around the city. Sure. Boys, yeah. have some more Sounds Yo Play. Compelling. I hope you pass them out to the audience. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, everybody. Hey, everybody. That's... Yo Play stand opening up at Sweetser Avenue and Pomegranate Lane. Are you going to be doing an appearance there? I might be. Uh-huh. Giving <laughs> you the latest scoops. Well, I think Ryan and I will be there. Yeah, I'd love yay. to go. I'd love to go. All right, well, I love it. All right, but, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, so all right, well, 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 maybe one. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one. What? Maybe one. One scoop. Yep. Huh? All right, Mister Scoop. We'll see you next week. Hey ho! What do you know? <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, it's time in the show for listener email. That's right, everybody. It's been a rough week. I'll just tell you that. It's been a rough week. What do you mean a rough week? Rough, Justin? rough because of well, your show. I've been losing sleep. I've I've been working. Me, Ryan, and I both working around the clock on We're a, like yeah, we've been working on like a dogs, on Jackie. a on a Cartoon Network uh, pilot that most assur- assuredly will get passed on, <laughs> and the fruits of our labor, unceremoniously. labor yeah, unceremoniously, we'll, we'll suddenly get a. Uh, I'll, I'll, it'll just be you know quietly uh, we'll, informed. We'll to submit it. We'll hand it in, and then like six months later, we'll be. Yeah. Hey, did you ever make a decision that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. God, what was that? We didn't tell you guys. Oh yeah, that, yeah. No, the day you turned it in, we were like, <laughs> no, no thanks. We were embarrassed. How many emails did we get? As are people still writing in? As Jackie yes. tabulates how much time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was wondering takes. because I've been getting some Facebook messages from like from fans and stuff. Really? And I like, And I been. love it. I, I, what have you been getting? Um, just like questions about boys, boy trouble, girl trouble. Um, like I love the show, stuff like that. And I think that they're writing into me and not into the show anymore. What's that about? Okay, well, then, because well, then, I, I am like Aunt Agony and I give them advice and I tell them like, well, Jesus Christ, like do they realize that they're hurting the show? Why? Because that's, they're, they're basically well, sidestepping you know why? Because the Because I care about them. And I care about their problems. Where when they write in here, we just go like, "Oh, that's very interesting." All right. Well, maybe we need a segment called Aunt Jackie Agathy, or whatever <laughs> it's called, where, where you just Ask sort of Jackie, where you where, where you can kind of answer them earnestly, and then I can just you know make fun of them and yell at them and that and you know whatever, right? Yeah. In fact, why don't we start right now? Okay, let's hear it. This is a, this is a, actually an, a, an advice question that someone wrote into to into the show. Oh, okay. love it, love it, love yeah, it. Yeah, like they're supposed to. Don't fucking sidestep the, the Please show. Please write me. I love it. Don't cut us out of the fucking circle. It says subject line is working in entertainment sucks. Mm. Agreed. <laughs> and this is from Kevin James, who's a longtime listener. Oh, he's written the, many times. the star of uh, yes. of, 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 of uh, uh, Mall Cop. And, and uh, yeah, he um, said, I'm very frustrated with my, my upcoming film, The Zookeeper. And I wanted to ask yeah. you guys some advice about okay. other career paths for me. Okay, cool. No. Uh, hey, GVP, Kevin James again. I've got a career question for you. I'm a 24 year old videographer, which is a bullshit term for a guy who makes videos, in quotes. That's living not here, bullshit. Living here in Massachusetts, which yeah, is probably is. my first mistake, mm-hmm. I've gone through a wide array of pay grades and success stories in my time. I've worked for major f- movie studios, done commission work for websites, and been paid handsomely for it all. 
Freelance okay. work pays the bills for me, which is nice, but I really hate scrounging for work every week. I'm probably going to mm. take a shitty bottom of the barrel job mm. soon to make ends meet, and it mm-hmm. had me thinking about something you three might have to, that you three might have something to say about. Do you guys and a girl think it can be detrimental to your career to work regular, dependable hours at a job that has nothing for your career, like flipping burgers, or do you think those cruddy jobs can wind up inspiring you? No, it's not about inspiration. It's about it's about having a like oh okay, it might okay flipping burgers is one thing because that's like you're still going to be sort of like freaked out and probably not have enough to make ends meet and stuff. But like if you got like a nice cushy office job that paid really well, <laughs> Justin, like, that that definitely would kill your spirit to to and your drive to fucking succeed. Oh and, oh I thought okay no I see what you're saying yeah no no I have had plenty of friends in my life who who because I did stand up and then the last five years of being in L A and doing videos that have. Yeah, there's nothing worse for someone trying to pursue something in the arts when they get like a good paying yeah. job that's like I'm working steady, at Geico reliable. Corporate. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm you're making, done. I'm you're making, done. I'm making sixty thousand yeah. a year. Take the shitty job. Yeah, yeah. Your Kevin, pilot's take amazing. the job if you need money, so you don't have to worry about money, Listen, and you'll be quit, fine. Quit fucking bitching. And you will still, quit you can still do freelance. You can still do everything you want to do. Just don't Just, suck any cut. Next email. Anyways, uh, Kevin, he also he also um, added some YouTube links to some videos he's made. I will. I have watch not them. seen those see. yet. I will watch this when I get a chance. Um, and then which we'll, will be never. We'll put Let's them, be honest. We'll put them on our. Uh, on our. We'll link them on our YouTube page. All right. We'll put fine. them in the favorite section. No, you mean you mean on the. Oh, okay, fine. Jackie will watch them. I'll know. watch. I'll watch. Them. I'll Wait watch a minute. Them. Maybe he doesn't want us to do that. I don't know. Well, whatever. Listen, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Next. Shut up. Okay, this is from Kathy. It says, Fart Noise. The comic book character? ABM. Says, Dear Grammar's Virginia, my name is Kathy. I'm a comic book uh, script <laughs> character. You may remember uh, <laughs> and, uh, all that stuff. Oh, chocolate. Yeah, I've been I'm on tons of coffee mugs. Anyways, can you help me out with my, some advice about men? <laughs> I can't seem to I find can't one. I can't figure them out. Yeah. And all what right. do I do about my okay. hair? Um, anyway, she said, My friend Kate, who's a dedicated listener and avid stock of your podcast, told me that that my brother from another mother was interviewed in a recent episode, and I must listen. That brother was T.J. Miller. I share a similar story of arterial ven- venous malformations. Oh, Jesus. <gasps> AVM. It would be much more interesting if I told you that after hearing his AVM seizure story, I went to have my own seizure migraines depression checked out. Oh, my God. And found out that I, too, have a ticking time on my head. But, and I have scheduled a surgery to have it removed. Oh, but, wow. She didn't have it happen yet. Or that my own... Drinking binges and drug use. No, no, she did. She said it would have. Wait, this is hit her. Oh, half, I see. Okay. His half sister. She, she, she's no, she's, advanced, all, she's she in now. advanced we're writing. We're all confused by the email. No, she's this in is... advanced writing class, and yeah. she threw a, threw your ass for a loop. I was following. Okay, it. got it. And then, I don't understand. And Jackie's lost from the yeah, brother from another mother. No, no, she she she's saying that it would be more interesting if she had said if she got had listened it. to the episode and then found out. But no, she's already known that she's had this issue. For a while. But okay. she does have the same issue that oh, TJ okay. had. Oh, gotcha. I did actually have the same surgery as TJ and have a similar scar to show for it. It was an accident. It was in a car accident when I was 15, which caused a concussion. After testing my... Because of the concussion, I was found to have an AVM. So four days after my 16th birthday, I was headed to have this bomb re- removed from my brain. Simply put, your Unlike. show appeals to more than just 13-year-olds who share a, lo- a love for fart noises. It also touches the hearts and brain scars of people in their late 20s. Aww. Also, because of this particular episode, I'm no longer an occasional listener, but have fully jumped... On the grandma's virginity well, band. Hope, hope, hope we didn't let Kathy. you down with this new one. Keep up the good work. Jesus, hope we didn't let you down with this new one, Kathy. P.S. Tell TJ if he wants to compare scars sometime. Ooh. I am available. And also, oh. I am the comic book strip character from Sunday morning. This is from Laura. I, whoops. Sorry. It says, Lynn, uh, uh, I love the ooh. podcast. I'm finally caught up. I think you need to create a new character. Captain Nip Noop, superhero. I actually used that the other day in a sarcastically rude conversation and immediately thought He's about coming. you guys. Keep them coming. He's P.S. Coming farts soon. and poops are not so cute. Ew, Jackie. Oh. Fartlessly yours, Lynn. Well done, Lynn. Well now, written. here's interesting. Here's a follow-up email. Oh. It says, two guys are growing a podcast. This was a, sent a few days later or a few weeks later. I don't know. But it says, my name is Laura. I've Another signed Laura? my last two emails as Lynn. Ooh, interesting. My middle name. See, Jackie, oh. I just read her previous email, and she had tried to trick us, and I, I slipped up, and I read the wrong name. But now it's oh. all revealed. It was a ruse. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Episode 27 was the best yet. Love, Papa. He sounds like the sweetest, coolest guy. Oh. Wish he was my him. grandpa. <laughs> Think he would adopt me? 
Ryan Kluby Cousins. I was born in Wyandotte, Michigan. What about Ooh, Kissing Cousins? Justin's random shout-out to Chuck E. Cheese made me laugh so hard. I snorted. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, uh, Laura Lynn, for revealing your true identity to us after Wait, is it Laura of... Linney? It is Laura Linney. <laughs> oh, my it, God. Yeah, we have a lot We've of celebrity listeners. We've got a lot of famous listeners. listeners on this show. Kevin James, Laura Linney. Tell this somebody. This subject is... Jackie disappoints is the next email. Uh-oh, oh, here we great. go. Charlie here. Charlie Loken? I just wanted to say, uh-huh. Oh. I was very disappointed in Jackie in episode 27. What happened? Mario was sitting there, clearly brokenhearted about Luigi stealing his money, and all Jackie cares about is going home. She Sorry, doesn't offer Charlie. Mario any compassion what. Soever. Wow. Can you imagine how many gold coins it would take in order to buy a plane ticket? Uh, I can't save up. I don't even know how that game goes, yeah, how yeah, it works, well, but hmm. I do love Charlie. I wonder how we'll ever find out. Um, that pro- that, don't worry, that probably has nothing to do no, with it. No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep okay. reading. Come on, Jackie. Very disappointing. I'm also, sorry. Also, Justin, I almost died laughing when you said what the third place was in the wrap-up segment. Can I get a shut the fuck up, bitch, from Justin? Hey, Justin, you want to you give us uh... Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. I don't know how to. How, I don't, I'm not sure what the inflection is. Huh? Is it angry? Uh, I guess that whoever's at the door went away. Well, is it? Um, is, it is it? Is it like <laughs> shut the fuck oh, up, is. bitch? Or is it like? I think it's shut sh- the fuck up. Shut bitch. the fuck up, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like that is oh. angry. I don't know. <laughs> Give I try him another my best. one. Oh, that guest is really persistent. Jeez. <laughs> uh, how about this? Shut the fuck up, bitch. Okay. You know what? I better answer this. Hold on. Hello. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? Oh, wait a oh, minute. What a Whoa. surprise. Hey, yo. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yo, it's me, Psychic hey, Ability. Hey, Psychic. I'm, we... Yo, I'm just here to yeah. introduce my we... homie. Yeah. <laughs> yo, his, yo, his name's Mario. Oh, hey. Here he goes. All right, here he is. <laughs> hey, Mario. Hey, everybody. Hey. Oh, hey. So wow, I didn't it's know you, you and Psychic Abilities were friends. Yeah, he, uh, he, uh, I hang out with him. Yeah? Sometimes. What do you guys do together? We had just to watch a TV. Oh, that's it? Do you ever go cruising around town, no. drinking drinking some... We had just to hang out and watch a some, DVDs. Some vodka and whatever, no. Cavassier. I just want to say... Uh-huh. I get a, a 99 coins... And then uh, I get a, if I get a one or more one or more coin, uh-huh. it'll turn into a life, and and I can uh, use my money. <laughs> the ki- the want to convert, huh? The, the bank want to take my money, my coins. Well, but but you get I an extra save life. Them up. You'll get what every human being wants: more life. But it, that's more valuable. That your money is more valuable than your life. I just uh, I just is so sick of it all. <laughs> What the the weird rules of the universe I'm you live in? I'm just gonna, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a just gonna give up. Oh, psychic! I'm a just gonna kill psychic, myself. Psychic, psychic! Help Come your on. friend out. Yeah, help, help your friend, friend out. Hey, yo, I, I don't, I don't even, I can't even help this fool out, yo. Why? He's yo, your, he's your friend. Yo, I can't help him out, yo. What you, you guys? You, you spend all this time watching TV together. Or you're, you're not. Yo, I can't help this fool out. <laughs> Why not? Well, what's in his future? What do you see for? Oh, uh, yo, see? yo. Straight up, uh, one thing, fool. Yeah. Straight up, dude. What? Straight up, gonna get you know, get that one stuff, fool. <laughs> Yo, straight up, gonna get real busy, fool. Straight up. <laughs> okay. It's like you seem a little distracted. Yo, straight up. Yo. So, so you see in his future that he's straight up gonna get the one extra life. Yo, straight up. Yo. Yo. He's gonna get at least one thing, fool. Uh-huh. Coming right out, coming straight to him. You know what I'm saying, well, Mario? Does that make you feel any better, or I don't know? I, I still don't understand what he's supposed to do with his yeah. coins. Psychic, yeah. help yo, him with his coin up. problem. Better start. So he needs to yo, get- <laughs> yo, guys, start saving up them coins, fool. Well, he told you that he he can only <laughs> save up to ninety nine, and then they disappear. He so gets what can you life. help him do? All right. With? Well, yo, you got to straight up stop fooling around, dog. <laughs> Mario, d- is this how Psychic always is, sort of dodgy and never yeah, giving you a yes, straight answer? He, he always would take the TV remote. <laughs> oh. And then we watch, um, uh, we been, we watch, um, uh, 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 um, Dexter. Uh huh. And he, and we, we, we just start. Showtime original series. Yeah, and he'd take the remote and he'll fast forward through whole uh, entire scene. Why? And I say, wait, uh, hold on, I, I want to <laughs> see. And then he'll say, he already know oh. what, what, what it is. Yeah, so why bother watching? Why are you hanging out with him? 
I don't Mario, know. D- I just don't have anyone. There's other friends. There's other psychic, friends. Psychic, wait, psychic. Can't you just let Mario enjoy the narrative unfolding of Dexter's plot? Oh, hell no, dude. I, yo, I got. Yo, I gotta keep rolling, fool. Is it? There... I gotta keep rolling. God, it must be bad watching a sporting event with you, huh? Yo, I. Yo, yo. Okay, hell, Ma- oh, Mario. Hell yeah. Mario, I think that I think that maybe Psychic isn't such a good person to spend yo, time with. Yo, hell yo. Mario, listen to me. Yeah. You've got to stop hanging out with such okay. bad people. All right. You're too much of a tender yeah. little soul. I, I get. I get. Who of our guests that come to the front door should he be hanging out with? Though they're all kind of horrible. <laughs> Toppy! Yeah, why don't you hang out with Toppy, yeah, Mario? Do you want us to introduce you to Toppy? I, I, I try to hang out with the Toppy. Uh huh, but. And uh, he is sound uh, so much like me, only without uh, the uh, <laughs> Italian uh, affect. Uh, see, so you that got... uh, we can't tell <laughs> each other apart. Wait, but how about you, 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 whoever's talking is. That's who you are. If you're. If you're the but vo- I can't if the, tell. If the voice is coming through your lips, that's you. But sometimes. I, my mind talks to me, uh-huh. and I hear my own And then you don't thoughts. know if it's Toppy's talking to you outside yeah, or if yes. it's your mind from the inside. Yes. I see. It's a two a hard. Okay. But other than that, he's cool? Yeah, he's a pretty a cool. <laughs> I bet you guys have a lot. It's ironic because you'd have so much stuff to talk about. We talk about a... Uh, Can you do an impression of Toppy? I'd love to hear this. Like, what's Toppy sound like, Marco? Uh, I'm a so... I'm not a good at an impression. <laughs> well, what's his favorite? What's his famous catchphrase? He would say, "Uh, you could talk about that." <laughs> he would say that. <laughs> That's adorable. It sounds just like Tommy. <laughs> we sound very similar. Yeah, yeah. I just want to watch Dexter uh-huh. with a w- w- with someone who's not going to fast forward. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, what about Luigi? Luigi, he taking my money. He he uh, I know. he he uh, mess up my bed. Well, what about he, other? Uh, yeah, I know. But what about other characters from the from the Nintendo universe, like Link or or, or oh, Saint, Link. Saint Seamus or whatever? Link, he oh, Metroid guy. He too good for me. Oh, he, I, I try to hang out with him. He's he say, uh, uh, you 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 know you you cannot do this. Oh, he's too he cool too for serious. you. Yeah, I see. He he take himself too seriously. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, he's like off. He's he, he, going on quests and fighting genuine real threats. He 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 he, he live in a full open world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not like I you. live in a levels. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's too bad that these that these other video game characters can't just you know they've got to have airs about them. They have to have attitudes. You know, why can't they just these all are people? Uh, sometimes these are people. It just a uh, a blow of my mind. Yeah. Well, is there anyone that you sort of look down on? Um, Cubert uh, or something. I think about Cubert. Uh, I haven't heard that in a long Cuba, time. I have a pencil Cuba case. Can't even talk to Cubert. Why? He don't. He he don't even uh, talk of the same language. <laughs> He just is making well, sometimes, noise. Well, sometimes characters can have sort of an, an, a quiet understanding, you know. He just to make noise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He just to go. What about the Dig Dug guy? No, he he is he he's sick. <laughs> he's sick. He's very sick. <laughs> what about the Burger Time guy? He's a dead. What did he die of? He died oh, of like a, a heart he, heart. No, disease? he he had a, the AIDS. <laughs> oh Jesus! In the eighties. Oh my God. He uh, died of the AIDS. Well, and then I'm sure you probably have no chance with these guys from these sophisticated new video games like Solid Snake or. Oh no. Yeah, no, they're way way too, too crazy. <laughs> Too many pixels. <laughs> Too many pixels. I can't hang out with it. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you because you're you have to make do with psychic abilities then. Yeah. Okay, psychic. You just do me a favor and just treat Mario a little bit better. Don't fast forward Dexter or anything. Yo, uh, yo, I tell just you pretend what. Pretend you don't know the future. Yo, listen here. Uh-huh. I'll tell you one thing, fool. Uh-huh. Yo. When I fast forward, I'm fast forward through scenes. You don't even need to see those. Oh, you understand what they could have cut. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Just the key elements of the plot. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so he's doing it for your own good, Mario. Okay. Okay, so why don't you guys go? Uh, I'm not trying to rush you up. we got to wrap up the show. Jack is very tired. All right. I would invite you guys to stay, but, you know, it's too many people. Oh. All right, so bye, guys. Bye. Oh, Oh, there's Psychic leaving. 
Mario, ready? Yeah, okay. I'm all ready? queued up. Okay. okay, here we go. Okay. Bye, Mario. <laughs> Talk about, it, you know, similar, they both have the wow. same sounding farts. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's confusing, too. Yeah. Well, that was an interesting visit, huh? It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I finally found the fucking thing I was looking for this uh-huh. whole time. God damn I think it. you should always be looking for something, Justin. It seems to make you sort of a little, <laughs> you know. I was so distracted. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, right. so uh, this next email, I don't know, are you, do you, are you do you, what do you want to say to Charlie Loken? He seems oh, to be. Yeah, he seems. I don't uh, he think seems he's really, angry he's with you. He's not angry. He's just. It's a flirtatious game. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. flirtatious game. He's a child, oh. Ryan. Mm. Well, this next email is not from a child. Uh, subject line is Papa Gladstone. Justin, your grandfather is adorable. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that World War II veteran that was on Justin. Your They're, your grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you guys you. looked alike <laughs> even. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, sort I, of similar I, attitudes. I mean, you know. Yeah, we're very similar. Yeah. Yeah. I take after him. Yeah, there's nothing more awesome than hearing older people with potty mouths, especially one who can roll with all of Ryan's voices. Oh, yeah. Like my Eckhart Whoops. Tolle. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jackie, you asked some very great questions about World War II. It's too bad either you got interrupted every time or you asked, uh, time you asked or the answers were interrupted. Is this guy yeah, being sarcastic? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for a great... I don't know. I just... You okay. know, I think he's just trying to talk about a show. All right. Uh, thank you for a great podcast. My heart breaks every time I hear personal accounts of the death camps getting limerate, liberated. Every time. How often is he? <laughs> yeah, jeez. Uh, What's going on? Where I'm, are you hanging out? I'm just glad Ryan skillfully lightened things up with a bit of whimsy. Otherwise, I would have crashed my car and oh, raised Oh, he's sadness. just confusing Ryan and Justin. It's yeah. okay. Is he? What the hell? Is he? What the hell, that? I'm a 35-year-old boy, and I approve your podcast. Sincerely, Aaron. Jesus Christ. Aww. Please withhold oh. my last name or get it confused for another one. Like Smith. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> this next e- email is, uh, I got all kinds of topics from a guy named James. Hi, folks. I love you all. And if I had the skills of the time, I'd make a video of Justin's hysterical iPad freak out. Oh, that was a treat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's me saying that. So my girlfriend yeah. and I were talking about something a little risque. We agreed we had we had to consult you on it. We were talking about sex offenders and child molesting priests, Mm -hmm. and it occurred to us that maybe all these priests would abuse fewer kids if they had some kind of victim-free outlet for their sexuality. Of course, live-action child porn is horrible. Uh Uh-huh. The psychic (laughs) has child porn. Be back. Yo! (laughs) Yo, I want to talk about child-free porn! Yo! Hey! Talk about some child-free porn! Yo! Some porn! Yo, gonna watch about the lean on. Hey, child free porn. Very good. Yo, yo. You look for that on the B sides of Psychic's latest album. Yo, yo. Yo, yeah, no. Yo, watch out. Gonna get some of it. <laughs> okay, he goes on to say, uh, of course, live action. <laughs> Can we cut the beat, Psychic? Thank you. Of course, live action child porn is horrible, but what do you guys think of child porn and animation? It's horrible. What are you Aww. fucking kidding me? Right? Yeah. That's... I was Why? just talking wait, about what, this. Why can't the wait, wait. Catholic Church just Continue. let priests get married? <sighs> I don't think it would stop them. <laughs> I don't think it's up to the... Honestly, can I tell you something? I think, I think you might be right. Have, let them have sex. Yeah, can I tell yeah. you, can you, know, I tell you yeah. something? Stop it. This yeah. is can so Can I tell you world. why there's so fucking many retarded. gay priests? I mean, you can put you can put them together, right? It's obvious. Yeah. Okay, I don't even need to say it. No. So continue with this. What's the what's wait? The... What are you saying? Why there's so many gay priests? Well, because when you who what straight man who wants to fucking eventually have sex with a woman is gonna give that up for God? Oh yeah. yeah. So Hello. Saying, yeah. yeah. I mean, who 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 would be more attracted to the priesthood than a gay man who's like, yeah. I don't want to fuck a woman, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I want to fuck dudes, but that's Boys, bad. So but, yeah, but so, then they but get in there, and then they're, they're like, me. "Oh 
full. You know, oh. they, I mean, they not, need to let them have sex. Yeah, look, I don't want to. I don't want to play it. the game read, of read this email though because I remember reading this yeah, and thinking think like I've got yeah. shit to say. I mean, it's totally gross to us. This is referring to child porn animation. Okay, animated. But child if no porn. actual kids were involved in the production of it, what about the voices? What are you going to get, Nancy Cartwright? Do you all the voices? <laughs> yeah, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, she'll do uh, it. And, and involved in the actual production of it, doesn't it give people who would otherwise grope altar boys a kind of pressure release? No, no, it's not the same thing. That's like buying a living doll. No, it's like it's not the same. thing. That's like to say that oh man I don't need to have sex with a woman again I can just watch all this anime yeah porn. no here's the thing I think that, that animated porn animated yeah. porn would only lead to more pedophilia because these people would get themselves all worked up watching it yeah and then they'd want to go out and fucking live it and fucking rape a kid so no I mean you know it's not gonna happen you know what I mean oh yo animated porn I, I ain't gonna help the problem you're gonna sell the problem. He's gonna get real busy. Everybody gonna get a sizzy. Hey, you better be careful. Animated porn gonna sell awful. And uh, one dollar from uh, the sale of uh, every copy of Psychic Willie's new single goes to stopping animated child porn. So buy it up, everybody, on iTunes and our website. <laughs> And you'll be supporting a good cause. <laughs> so he says, well, you're wondering if it could be an Ultra Boy iPhone app or something. You can use two fingers on those screens, right? That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe that as, okay, a, as okay. a satire. Okay, okay, so anyway, since you guys like to eat cum and you all work or have worked in animation, we're wondering about your thoughts are in this. Animated child porn, could it maybe reduce child molestation? No. 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 And he says, I don't like your dog. It would my only grandpa, make it worse. My grandpa is a fantastic, fantastic badass. Great job in re- interviewing him without any condescension, con- condescension or much disrespect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, you can't cool. condescend to my grandpa, no, my and papa. I, and I had, I had, I had a, a ton of respect for him. I, I, I was, I, all my comments were completely not out of any place of disrespect. It was just out of, I think, the four loco. No, when it's time for you guys to be on good behavior, Justin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look at how mm-hmm. look at how well behaved that was for the Tom and Max interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, yeah, give me a break. You, yeah, you were very. Respectful. I handled myself quite well. Okay, those well, guys are class acts. We're around in the corner, super happy. Uh, hello, you guys. Well, like I said, my name is Alejandra. I am really Ooh, super Mexican. And Alejandro, yes. Alejandro. Dra, dra. That's I know, but I'm just singing oh, the Lady Gaga oh, song. Okay. I love super Mexicans. I'm really super Mexican, and yes, I Does that I mean you have superpowers? Oh. Legal. I turned 18 on December. Aww. And I'm a boy. I li- oh, wait. <laughs> live in Phoenix, <laughs> Arizona, and I was really excited when you guys read my really short email. Aww. I was showing the girl next to me in class, and she was looking at me like, you're weird, but I don't care. You know what? You that girl's going to grow up to be... President. Dead. Mm. Stop it. And I, I love you guys. You guys made my day. I've been listening to you guys since that boring day that I found you guys, and since then I can't live without you guys. Aww. And I, in bold blueprint, love every single episode, and especially the super long ones. <laughs> I love all the fart and vomit sounds. <laughs> Justin sounds like he is very handsome. Ryan is well, funny and sounds... You got that right. Very adorable. And Aww. Jackie, well, sounds I Sounds like a fucking whore. She... You wish what? I wish she didn't sound so much like a fucking whore. <laughs> what a coincidence. No, oh, she didn't say that. pink font. <laughs> no, no, she, she said, didn't say that. No, she I said wish what? she was like my best friend adopted sister. Oh, my God. Facebook friend me mm-hmm. immediately. And ask her about how. And, and send me nudie pictures. No. With this guy who's giving you the runaround. Yeah, Jack, I'll help you with all of your you problems. Straight. I love it. Love uh, she sounds she sounds very cute and sweet. And no, I'm not into girls. Also, I love the characters. I will never. But be I able do to like play. to eat pussies. I will never be able to play <laughs> Mario <laughs> Brothers without laughing at Mario and feeling sorry for him for his date rape with a bullet. Of bill. <laughs> uh, ha ha ha! Well, keep the awesome work, and I love you guys. And I know we are like close to each other. We are not close to each other, but you guys are welcome to come here anytime, especially yeah. Jackie. Oh, I would love to. I wish I could. I'm getting in my car right now. Just just let me tell you that if you have, would have named the podcast something else, like the dentist titles you're talking about what, what three, was it three three, three wild den- dentists yeah <laughs> i wouldn't have been interested oh my god and i have tried to get my fiance by the way my fiance hates justin wait wait wait, wait fiance, fiance she's only 18 hold on oh, okay oh no 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 you need girl. to write me yeah. you're too young do not get married yeah, well why don't you don't just do it talk don't. about it right now yeah tell what her is, now i forgot her name again alejandra, alejandra. Duh, alejandra. when i was singing the lady gaga song mm-hmm. duh um 
Oh, yeah. Don't. Don't do please, it. Please, please. You're too young. You have your whole life ahead of you. Don't get married. Yeah. It already wait, sounds like... Wait, wait, what did like she just Jackie say? Did. Wait, just wait wait you, you're in your 30s. What like did Jackie. you... Well, you sort of seized on the it word fiancé. It wasn't supposed to be that way, Ryan. Will you read the, what she said? What, what oh, about I'm sorry. It? The part that you're interested in? Yeah. Uh, it says that um, that uh, she has tried to get her uh, fiancé interested. Uh, by the way, my fiancé hates Justin. I try to convince him that he's very funny and nice, and he says that I'm blind and says that he is sorry for me for being dragged into your podcast. Well, obviously, if there's he's any jealous. other reason to end the, end the yeah, engagement. I mean, come yeah. on. If he hates Justin, then yeah. he's got problems. Yeah. Wait, I, I Only wonder, I'm allowed to hate yeah. Justin. I wonder uh, how old the fiancé is. I'm going to say 37. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you we, yeah, write back and tell us tell how us, old he give is. Give us the deets. No, yeah. he's probably like 17 yeah. or 18. It's a joke. They're not fucking engaged. You come never on. know. You... When you're Justin in high school, got someone a engagement ring when he was like in his twenties, and that was twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, yeah. it was twenty six. Uh, brother, and it was, but I did spend a lot of money on it. Anyways, uh, so she says that she's been trying to get her brother and sister to listen and friends, but they just don't pay attention. And they get really mad because they don't know what they're, she gets mad because they don't know what they're listening. And she uses Jackie's quotes all the time. It'll so be all right, Alexandro. And, and I don't like it. And Daddy, and it'll I be love okay. It. Oh. It'll be okay. Everything's gonna and be Justin, all right. And Justin, please. She says this to you, and I think she might be uh, projecting. Please, uh-huh. if you get married, don't leave the GVP. Love you guys. Oh, don't oh, worry. It would never happen. Are you I... getting married? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the services have been set. No. Oh. Didn't you get no. the invite? Yeah, you're getting hit. Not mind. Listen, I have a new rule. I will not marry a person unless I've been with them for 25 years. <laughs> oh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Hey, GBP, <laughs> I'm your biggest fan from England. I was just wondering if you could suggest any other podcast for What? Me? Someone from England? Yeah, our biggest it, fan can, from can England. Can you please read it in the accent that it was yeah, written in? Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Hi, GBP, I'm your biggest fan from England. I was just wondering if you could suggest any other podcast for me to listen to. No. just you ain't cutting it anymore. Thanks. Just kidding. Love you guys and hope that Justin's life goes to shit oh, in the near future. It's like He's Australian now. Down. It's kind of Australian. I have a question for you. Um, can I? Is there any place I can call to maybe check in about getting insurance for saving some money on my insurance? <laughs> 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 I see what you did there, Justin. Are you a tiny little gecko, by yes. the way? Oh. You know, I tried to hang out with Mario one time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he's just too pathetic, I frankly. don't. I don't normally talk about, like, my family. When I went to go see Rango, my niece kept kept asking, well, I don't, and why is that the Geico lizard? I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> Were you rolling your eyes like, oh, my God. No, I was laughing. How old is she? Did she really think it was the Geico? They built a movie around the fucking Geico lizard? Wow, he's really ma- like she was thinking. He really has an intricate really backstory. Amazing, he's though. made it. Like he's got a movie now. <laughs> That's what it was coming from. You know? Why, ja- ja- Aunt Jackie? Why oh is she still God. doing these? Co- he's still doing these commercials. <laughs> I don't get it. He's got a whole career. Uh, he's, Boy, where he does he live? That contract I must I be see very that binding. His house. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, well, this is great, uh, Anthony. Thank you for you know, Anthony, and anyone else listening to these crazy foreign countries you can write ra- give us ratings on your own itunes because it's a separate system yeah, yeah, There's yeah. different ratings and- yeah it just please everyone rate us on itunes please if you haven't done it you have to we need it we're gonna die we're like a tree that needs water and your and water your are the ratings is the is the water i don't even care and if the it's media's ad- accolades are the sun it doesn't even need to be praise you could rate us all just if, if a thousand people all gave us one stars i don't care just rate us so that we get ratings that's all that matters I mean, of course, if you really feel that we deserve a praise, then go <laughs> well, for it. You know? we, I'm not going to hold you back. You. Okay, next email. First time emailer. Hello, GVP. My name is Evan Matson. You can say my last name. I live in New York, and I love with your show. However, I'm far away from my home at the moment because I'm going to college at Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, oh. Florida. Ringling. Soda, Florida. Mm-hmm. Watch out for ringworms. i film there. major where we get to the Where they got their name. Top of the line new film equipment. Unfortunately, I can't touch the stuff yet, being a freshman and all. I'll soon be 19 and a sophomore. However, so I was wondering if I could maybe film something special for you. Ooh. Are you kidding? Is a request? Does he not know about the contest? The Grandma's Virginity 3DS contest where you could take a 33-minute... <laughs> oh, wait. What does he want to film for us? I don't understand. I don't he lives know. in uh, New York. What? Well, I think maybe what he's implying is... Uh, do, do, is there a, th- a three-minute stretch of uh, audio oh, that he could film something yeah, for? Yeah. Maybe there is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And win a prize. There's Go no rules. It. I mean, you could you could film your friends lip-syncing us. Yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. Film, uh, film Clay, a... Clay, stop motion animation. Yeah, Digital film, 3D effects. Fil- do it all, baby. Yeah. I think he might be implying that he can't film anything for a year. 
So he's sort of just getting the the uh, early, you know, what the early word. Like, yeah. is there anything next year you guys yeah. want me to film? Ooh, all right. I don't know, we'll check in with us, you know? Yeah, we'll keep you on the back burner. P.S. Jackie is very, very pretty, and she put a smile on my face when she accepted my friendship <gasps> on Facebook recently. Be nice to her, Ryan. Yeah. She is your future wife anyway. Oh, don't Boy. say that. People really think. Psychic abilities, are you still here? No. Let me check and see if he's okay. still here. Hold on. How do you check? Uh, I mean, just have to, I just have to dial after? into my my cloud tablet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, yeah. he does. It looks as if he's still here. Oh, okay. So, Psychic, uh, what do you think about this? Everybody seems to think Jackie and I have a future together. There's some oh, sort yeah. of Sam and Diane thing going on. Oh, yeah, on. fool. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something about that, dude. Yeah. What? Oh. Yo. 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 Jackie and Ryan. Yo, you're gonna have a little future line. Yo, you're gonna get the future. Hey, don't get a loocher. Yo, don't watch out for trouble. Gotta keep your head in the level. <laughs> Yo, gonna watch a thing. Well, if I was not, if I wasn't, get a little thing. If I'm gonna watch out for trouble, I gotta avoid a relationship with Jackie. No, man. no. You gotta keep it going. Don't wanna get into trouble. Gotta get Jackie and Ryan and Mary. Hey, yo. I like you, Larry's. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Hell Very yeah. good. All right. Yeah. You got you and Jackie. You guys are. You want to know what? You going to get married? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not clear about what he's saying. So I guess uh, I guess it's a mystery. Only time will tell. Yeah, we'll see. No, uh, okay. No, thank you. Okay. Um, why don't you know what? I wasn't going to. I was going to be done, but I feel bad because, uh, you know, we have to respect our loyal emailers yeah and listeners so i'm gonna read this last email from sarah rome yay sup my bros I'm, it's sarah rome after listening to your podcast in the beginning i haven't gotten even i have gotten even more interested in animation i've already been a devoted Aww. flapjack chowder and adventure time fan as i've told you many a time uh, but i have actually started taking animation classes Aww, oh interesting sarah. i have also been watching some amazing claymation such as harvey crumpet and marion max but yesterday i thought that might be what i want to do when i get older i think it'd be awesome at right i'd be awesome at writing stories and doing voice acting for kid shows i've bought a big sketchbook and would like to join justin in his new year's resolution and fill it up with sketches how's that going justin how's your sketchbook i have drawn nothing (laughs) well we have been been busy so busy we have been busy but i've been still busy making other people draw yeah and uh let me just tell you this sarah rome shoot for the stars and maybe you'll hit the moon Huh? Oh, hey. Yeah. That's very good, Justin. I want to see some of your drawings, Sarah. Send them in. Send in some art. I don't know yeah. if she's ever and done And then you'll be art. like me. You'll be sitting on an asteroid in between Earth and the moon. Sound like Charlie Sheen there, Justin. Yeah, that's right. That uh, <laughs> sitting on an asteroid. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm sitting on an asteroid between the Earth and the moon. Nobody gets it. Nobody yeah. understands me. Uh, lots of love to Abed, Kent, and especially my sister, Jackie. Love you, Look, Sarah. She's got some competition this week. All right. Ooh. Schmauz out. I don't know. Someone else, Alejandra, wanted to be your sister. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Schmauz out. I think she's trying to create her own catchphrase. Oh, Sarah, well, that's Good luck with that. <laughs> P.S. Justin, besides the whole monster face thing, we are, we're very similar kids. I believe it. Just Well, keep... maybe she had a monster face with a very long nose. In your Ew! in your in your sketchbook, Come on, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, it probably would have been more satisfying. <laughs> um, in your catch in your sketchbook, make sure that you draw comics, and then we'll be even more similar. Yeah. Um. Oh, you know what? I just, I actually do really want to read this last email. Okay, this is nice. Go ahead. This uh, last episode, in, in parentheses, with the farting German. Hey, guys, I just want to say thank you for the super funny podcast you create. My grandfather passed away the day after you aired the last <gasps> episode, and my whole family and I are really sad, and nothing cheerful or good was happening. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stand the anguish of it all, so I plugged into my iPod to escape reality. <laughs> Justin, come on. I had to. Jesus. Come on. I mean, what do you, you hear sincerity and earnestness, and you just like, oh, I can't handle it. It's my defense mechanism. I mean, really. This is, this is okay, it's so go rude. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, so she, he, he plugged his... Uh, um, iPod in to escape from reality and of course I noticed a new episode from GVP so I started to listen it was absolutely hilarious as usual and lightened the mood for me so I just want to say thank you for the farts to come oh you know what I'm sorry Justin <laughs> my apologies <laughs> 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 the come and all the characters they have yeah, really I mean, made come on, they're writing into this show <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget where, who we, who we are and wh- what we're doing. Uh, it's like the old parable, the scorpion yeah. and the frog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they've really made my life bearable during these past two weeks. I also, I felt kind of bad for laughing to myself on the ride home since everyone is really sad. But that's what you guys do. So hey, listen, I've got I've, uh, just just to let you know to sort of cheer you up. Um, you know, it's horrible, and I'm really sorry. And I do, you have my 
my uh, uh, what is it? Condolences. Yeah, what, what is, is that? Yeah. What is that emotion? Yeah. Sympathy, what is it? The sympathy. Like, uh, what is that emotion? That your I'm grandfather to died, feel? but he's probably in heaven with God and Jesus <laughs> and Hitler. <laughs> well, because everybody uh, gets second chances oh, okay. in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> All right, wait, maybe not. That sounds like a, a tagline for a movie. <laughs> Everyone gets second yeah. chances in heaven. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the so movie what is would that be, premise the, about? The, the movie if somebody be, fucks the, up in heaven? No, no, no. It, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, like what it is is like like uh, uh, Satan quits. He's like, I, I'm out. I'm done. Uh-huh. Fucking quit. Here, take him, God. And God's like, fuck, fine. <laughs> Let him in. It's like it's just every like you all get a second chance. Uh-huh. I mean, shit. You know, this whole thing was this is it's a work in progress, anyways. Yeah. It's been this is, yeah. Know, fuck it. Here we hey, go. Things have the right to evolve yeah. over time. And the story perfect. follows a, a family who gets hit by a bus uh-huh. a, in their car. They all die. And their once. first day in heaven, they're like, "This is great." And then all of a sudden, it's, it's like, like Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, what? Timothy McVeigh? Yeah, what's go- <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, what the hell? <laughs> All right, everybody, make room in your heavenly houses. <laughs> We're going to have some guests until we build some new places. Yeah, it'll be a yeah. lot like that uh, that uh, Brooks movie. Uh, what, what, what's yeah. the, what is that movie <laughs> Defending called? Defending Your Life? Yeah, Defending this Your Life, only, family is, only horrible. Yeah, this new family has to, li- has to it'll learn. It'll be like Defending Your Life, only a thousand times yeah. less good. New fi- family has to learn to live with uh, Richard Ramirez and Joseph Stalin. <laughs> oh, my God, Richard Ramirez. Mirrors, that'd be awful. And, they, and next door is a really like well-to-do also because he's still Christian alive. Family. My mistake. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyways, listen. I do, I really do sympathize. I'm sorry. Losing someone is hard. Uh, okay, everybody. All right, everybody. That was episode 28 of the Grandma's Virginity podcast. Um, stick with us. We're we're you know, we're getting back on track. I think the next four weeks we'll have episodes in a row. We've got book guests booked at least. Who? 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 We've got the comedian Jen Kirkman coming Rob up. Schraub's Rob Schraub's coming Schraub's up. Rob coming up in the Aww. future. Um, and some other guests that we really let do you know, know about. Do you not know? Do we? We both are that bad of people. We don't even know who our guests are. I we'll don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Um, anyways, so um, thank you everybody for emails. We'll, 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 if you missed your email this week, we'll get to it next week. Hopefully, uh, keep writing in. Keep writing rate in. Us on rate us on iTunes. Please rate us on iTunes. Um, thank you to our uh, amazing guests, <laughs> Tom Gamble and Max Pross. Thank you to Dean radical. and Sam, Dean our and producers. Sam. And a huge thank you Ryan to Ryan Elder. Oh, Ryan Elder, of course, who uh, may music. or may not have added music in this episode, but has in the past. Uh, and a big thank you to uh, Darren. Is it pronounced Darren? Neffrey, yeah. Okay. Darren Neffrey oh, for the incredible it episode that we are. It's not already... Neffrey. Good. It's not Neffrey? No, it's Neffsy. Oh, of Neffsy. All. Why did I say Neffrey? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Well, I'm going off I'm of sorry, Darren. Yeah. No, what? Listen. Last anyway, the I'm, art, I'm, I'm the art she submitted for our, our, our current episode, this episode is incredible. Oh, it is man. some of my favorite art we've got. She gotten. really set the bar. I mean, all of our art lately for 2D has been art. amazing. And the 3D um, art, the, the clay art was set the bar for clay art. Oh. The and then the and then the 2D, she set the bar for 2D art. But you can check and out then, her uh, oh. website at uh, uh, www. Darren D A R O N Leah L E A H dot com. I'm sure. So it's DarrenLeah dot com. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, okay. I'm gonna click on it right now. It's an art blog. And... My God, there's cocks and balls and like <laughs> buttholes and shit. Oh shitting. God! Oh God! Oh, Do not God. go on this website. Oh my God. God! Oh Darren! Oh good Lord! It's just not even art. It's just photography. Okay. All right. So that's the show. So no, she's uh, got some great art on here. It's amazing. Check it tune out. Tune in next week. And thank you. And for tune in next episode. week for more fun and hijinks and insensitivity. All Bye. right. And of course, Jackie will have another positive thing to say about her life. Yeah, yeah. I like that segment no, a lot. It's, it's really good. good. All right. See you guys. Good night. Bye. What a mommy rific episode. Grab yourself a muscular mommy for getting through the whole thing. Head over to iTunes and rate the show. Please do it. It's important. Send us your emails, episode art, and other stuff to grandmasvirginity at gmail.com. Hop onto your iPhone and download the free Grandma's Virginity app. It's in the App Store. Just search Grandma's Virginity. And install that big bad boy. He's fantastic. Give it a rating too while you're at it. Keep those Nintendo 3DS contest entries coming. You could win some big prizes. I mean huge. Follow us on Twitter at Grand's Virginity. And join our Facebook page over at www.pigsarepeople.com. 
follow me on Facebook too. Just go to facebook.com slash big voiceover fun. I'm your announcer, Smith Harrison. Thanks for listening. Now go grab yourself a nice cold muscular mommy fold. You've earned it. See you next time.